and I'm not opposed to engaging in a bout of fisty cuffs from time to time if the occasion calls for it. I'm Alistair Stevens, and I'm above average. <laughs> I'm Elizabeth Stevens, and oh, look, a baby! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Vinton Bain of Themyscira, daughter of Hippolyta, queen of the Amazons. In the name of all that is good, your wrath upon this world is over. <laughs> It's a good line. It's I'm a, a little intimidated line. right yeah. now. I'm, I'm a little line. scared. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I'm just podcasting, man. Back off. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and this week we are talking about Wonder Woman, which just came out. And also Elizabeth is here, which is, I'm I don't know which one of these things is more exciting. I'm equally uh, excited I'm about both. Equal, yeah. 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 They're on the same level. <laughs> She's my Wonder Woman. Oh, <laughs> That's Wonder amazing. Woman. You are our first <laughs> official <laughs> Excelsior <laughs> guest. This is very oh, exciting. Oh, wow. This yeah. is very exciting. Yes. Thank y'all. Wow. Crashing the party. Happy here. to be here. Yeah. <laughs> so, how did you first come to knowing about Wonder Woman? Did, was this film an introduction for any of you? Well, I actually first was introduced to Wonder Woman because when my husband and I were dating, we went to, I don't know, like Hastings or, I think it was mm -hmm. Hastings. We went uh, running around and of course he's a DC fanboy and I'm a Marvel fanboy and he was like, well, you should check out Wonder Woman. And initially I was like, okay, everything I know about Wonder Woman I learned from like the Justice League animated show and she's the chick. Like, I don't, I'm not, I'm not into it. I'm not interested, whatever. Like there, there's a better use of my time. So he introduced me to the Brian Azzarello run of Wonder Woman, which we've talked about before on the show and no. I think we will talk about those comics very specifically at some point on the show mm -hmm. um, and I was in I mean like immediately was like okay no I love Wonder Woman which is not <laughs> something I ever thought was going to be you know a reality of mine and so uh, then when she popped up in Batman versus Superman the extended trailer for Wonder Woman I was uh, even more in and very very excited and uh, I love this movie very very much it is definitely like now in my top five favorite superhero movies of all time yeah. Excellent. Elizabeth? Uh, for me, I have a little bit of history. My First of all, like the old school Wonder Woman TV show was my dad's super crush forever. With Linda so, Carter? With Linda Carter. Yeah. So my dad's always sure. like Linda Carter, though. So <laughs> I remember that vaguely, but I never saw an episode. And then I once dated a guy who was the same guy who told me I would like Captain America, also told me I would like Wonder Woman. He's like, no, you'd be into this chick. She okay. throws her shoes. She has an invisible plane. There's a lasso of truth. Just trust me. <laughs> she has an invisible plane. You'd be really into it. Yeah. <laughs> That's what? a type. That's a type and of I was like, I, oh, What's okay. weird is that you're right. <laughs> That's what's this weird. This is my <laughs> So he was right about both things. Turns out, what do you know? Thanks again, bud. And uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm into this. Oh, and also, let's not forget one of my very favorite light bulb episodes, which I'm sure <laughs> Alistair is about to tell us a little bit about as yeah. you explain you and Wonder Woman. Yeah, I am familiar with Wonder Woman, of course, through her comics history. I've never read Wonder Woman with any kind of attention or care at all. And I'm familiar with the Linda Carter TV show, but not terribly familiar. Mm -hmm. uh, my passion for Wonder Woman started a couple of years ago when I did a light bulb episode in which I researched the creator of Wonder Woman, William Moulton Marston. That story is magnificent and brilliant and bonkers and <laughs> yes. you should just, just go read the Wikipedia page about William Moulton Marston. I, I'm actually going to give you a pricey in just a few minutes, but yes. Vinton, are you a huge Wonder Woman fan? I never have been. Of course, I think I've said it on the show maybe a dozen times. I've always been a Marvel fanboy mm -hmm. who loves Batman. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's just where I land in that scale. Um, I don't know a lot about Wonder Woman, which is maybe going to show in this episode a little bit. Uh, I like the old show with Linda Carter a lot. I watched it when I was growing up uh, alongside the 66 Batman. Those were two superhero shows I really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. uh, and I liked her in all the cartoons, the Justice League cartoons and, and so on. Mm. But I grew up a Marvel fan and my Wonder Woman was always Storm from the X-Men. <laughs> so, yeah, now you so mentioned me mine too. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> we had Halle Berry. I mean, yeah. what more can we ask? Yeah, right. What? No, hold on. <laughs> Record scratch. Go back. <laughs> So Wonder Woman was created by William Moulton Marston, who was born on May 9th, 1893 in Saugus, Massachusetts. He attended Harvard, earning his PhD in psychology. Right after he graduated, he married his wife, Elizabeth, who also graduated, not from Harvard, of course, because girls can't go to Harvard. Let's not be crazy. <laughs> but she did graduate with a PhD in psychology. He spent much of his early career engaged in experimentation about lie detection. He was fascinated with the idea that we could scientifically identify and tag criminals even before before they had committed crimes, that ah. we could just profile criminals completely. He was minority, minority report. report. Yes, <laughs> William Moulton Marsden, I should say, early in this in this brief recap, not necessarily the world's greatest dude, uh -oh. like not necessarily just 
awesome, as we discovered when he started first having an affair and then moved in with his 21-year-old research assistant mm -hmm. while still being married to his wife. The great thing about this is that apparently, by all accounts, his wife Elizabeth was super into the idea because she did not want to have children and wanted to pursue her career. <laughs> I like her. This is so neat. she's very happy for her husband to be sleeping with this, this poor woman. I know. It is about this point in his career when his interests in lie detection start to start to ebb a little bit, and uh -huh. he instead gets into alternative research. Primarily, how do women feel when they're tied up? And how do other women feel when they are made to beat the women who are tied up? This is legitimate scientific research, people. Because he took notes? Research. He's a, yes, yes, he wrote down everything. Therefore, science. I got a grant. It's research. Science. <laughs> if you're, no, if you're not taking notes, then you're just screwing around. While speaking to the Alpha Omicron Pi sorority, where freshman pledges were made to dress up like babies were then blindfolded, had their hands bound behind them, and then were beaten by sophomores while they performed menial tasks. Research. William Moulton Maston <laughs> well, is hang on, recorded... Was that research or was that just hazing? It was just a Friday night. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you were in a sorority, right? You remember that? <laughs> uh, my sorority experience was very, very different, but yes. <laughs> More, uh, William Moulton Marston said at the time, nearly all the sophomores reported excited pleasantness of captivation emotion throughout the party. He was just super into people being tied up, but super also into femininity and feminine power. And he became convinced through the course of his career that men were the root of all evil in the world. Well, yes. That women can save the world through also, the yes. application of loving justice. All they had to do huh. to make the world a better place was just tie up everyone who needed to be tied up and occasionally beat them. I like we get into this idea though. Like this sounds like a good plan to me. <laughs> wow. In 1937, Marston gave a press conference because by this point he had actually earned uh, such a degree of notoriety that he had a advertising contract with Gillette. He would go and advertise razor blades because he was renowned psychologist William Moulton Marston. And he gave a press conference in which he said that women ultimately would rule the world. It was in or around 1937, around the time of this press conference, that he came up with the idea of Wonder Woman. He wanted to create a female superhero, a female superhero, coincidentally, based on his wife, Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. Huh. I shall say no more than that uh -huh. on that topic. <laughs> he said that he wanted to create a female superhero who defeated the bad guys not with guns or fists, but with love. Marston wrote, quote, not even girls want to be girls so long as our feminine archetype lacks force, strength, and power. Not wanting to be girls, they don't want to be tender, submissive, peace-loving as good women are. Women's strong qualities have become despised because of their weakness. The obvious remedy is to create a feminine character with all the strength of Superman, plus all the allure of a good and beautiful woman. We realize there's some troubling parts of that quote. Don't tweet us, it's a quote. No. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, trust us, we know. We know. <laughs> we know. So obviously much can be made of Wonder Woman's origins, certainly of her lasso of truth, and also her bracelets. Her bracelets were modeled on a pair of real life bracelets worn by his research assistant, Olive, who lived with him and his wife for their entire life. When Marston died in the 1940s of cancer, Olive and Elizabeth continued to live together until Elizabeth died in like 1997. They spent their whole lives wow. living together. 50 years, just the two of them hanging out. That is the book that That's I want to so read. so fascinating. I want to it's definitely hear so about that. It's just so fascinating. God, I love that story. It's bonkers, but interesting. <laughs> so a quick publication recap here. Superman first appeared in Action Comics number one in 1938. Batman first appeared in Detective Comics 27 in 1939. Also in 39, Marvel Comics number one was released by Timely, featuring Namor the Submariner, the Golden Age Human Torch, and previously mentioned in an Excelsior podcast, Kazar. Wonder Woman first appeared in All-Star Comics number six in December of 1941, Sensation Comics number one in January of 1942. Then later that year, Wonder Woman number one was printed. That was the middle of 1942, and it remained in continuous publication until 2006, when DC put it on hiatus for four months. Wonder Woman is the longest running solo hero in comics publication history. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah. And if DC hadn't screwed around in 2006 so that they could do another universe rebooting crossover, <laughs> her numbering would have remained uninterrupted. So wow. she is absolutely one of the heavy hitters. Wonder Woman is commonly identified as part of the Trinity. DC is defined by mm -hmm. Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman. She, yeah. is, she is right up there and always has been, really, since her earliest introduction. 
That speaks to me a lot. The Trinity. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> and Wonder Woman is in the comics, mostly what we see here in the film. We're not going to dive too deep into the comic history because I don't know a lot about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but she was originally the, the clay brought to life from yeah. Zeus. And it was in Brian Azzarello's run in the New 52. More recently, they gave us a story here that was adapted into the film that she is actually the daughter of Zeus. Which yeah. I'm super into. I, I know really that like yeah. a lot. Great a idea. Lo yeah, I think that there are a lot of fans who really didn't like that because uh, they really loved that like Wonder Woman was like didn't like came into being with that like that diana came into being without the help of a man whatsoever yeah, yeah. but zeus is a male god all right so i, I don't feel like that argument necessarily tracks <laughs> that's true i was gonna say but he did if he really yeah i mean it clay, wasn't like, like hippolyta way. made the clay blue on it and there was a baby she right. still needed some outside help there but right. i i love the idea that she is actually like the daughter of zeus by the way we're gonna spoil the hell out of the comics and the hell out of this movie so i hope you saw it already <laughs> at least twice <laughs> there's a the distinction though between the original story the, the the breathed life into clay story and the actual daughter of zeus which is that now as in the movie universe wonder woman's an actual god a yes. legit god she's yeah. not an amazon which does change her character somewhat mm -hmm. traditionally she was superpowered in the way that Captain America is superpowered. Yes. She's just as good as a human can be, but now she actually has legit legit powers, I guess. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Not just the power of love. <laughs> the power most importantly the power love. of love. Yes. <laughs> So let's flip over this VHS and I read love about that. this That's our film. Thing now it makes mm -hmm. me so happy. It's an origin story done right as we rewind to before Wonder Woman stole the show from those squabbling mama's boys. <laughs> Diana is the princess of the Amazons, a trained warrior in the bright, colorful land of kick-ass women. <laughs> when a pilot crashes off their shores and tells of a war to end all wars in the outside world, she leaves home to destroy the god of war who she believes is behind this worldwide conflict. She's off to discover babies, ice cream, and that strange creature called man in a world that finally has a decent excuse for DC's dull desaturation and grit. <laughs> Watch out, fragile masculinity. Turns out, Females are strong as hell. <laughs> I just want to applaud you. That was that, that's a wrap. Beautiful. We're done. We'll be back next right, time talking about the Hatsu Walker Hellcat. <laughs> <laughs> so the story for this script came from Zack Snyder and Jason Fuchs and was written by Alan Heinberg, who's not a heavy hitter when it comes to script writing. This is not necessarily the most polished script you're ever going mm. to see. I think the movie yeah. kind of succeeds despite the moment-to-moment yeah. -moment dialogue rather than because of it, though there are some exceptional lines. I credit the success, and God knows this movie is a success. I credit the success of this movie to the director, Patty Yeah, Jenkins. absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So uh, Zack Snyder, as we all know, is known for his comic book movies that are mm -hmm. darker, grimmer, grittier, 300, Watchmen, Man of Steel, Batman vs. Superman. I and just then, got tired and sad. You yeah, just yeah, listened yeah, to Sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. That had happened. Jason Fuchs, on the other hand, his really only big writing credit that stuck out to me was that he's working on the Minecraft film. So there's that, what? which is um, a check. That's a check. That's the check that's going to buy him a swimming pool. Yeah, and exactly. Yep. His second <laughs> yeah. swimming pool, presumably. Uh, Alan Heinberg, on the other hand, at least does have some credit when it comes to comic books, having wrote Young Avengers 1 through 12, Young Avengers special for Marvel Comics, co-wrote five-part JLA arc for DC Comics with Jeff Johns, and wrote Wonder Woman 1 through 4 for DC. Mm -hmm. Nice. So he's got some, some history a little bit of the credit there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, sure. That's excellent. And having had a relationship with a uh, working relationship with Jeff Johns, you can see where some of Jeff Johns' influence does end up in this film. If you are familiar with his work, especially when it comes yeah. to Wonder Woman, Jeff Johns has an executive production credit on all the yeah, DC movies. Yeah, I think he's, yeah, over he's all the, of them. He's the uh, DC some degree. Kevin Feige, I right. suppose. I think so. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> the equivalent of some sort. <laughs> so, were you guys familiar with the work of Patty Jenkins going in? Not at all. Not at all. Nope. Then? So, I was only a little bit tangentially mm -hmm. i never saw a monster but i knew that she was famous for oh having, she did monster she I wrote and that. directed monster mm -hmm. based on the life of the convicted serial killer eileen warnos yeah. i think is how it's said and but she also did the pilot in the finale for amc's the killing mm -hmm. and she did uh pilots and other episodes including arrested development and hbo's entourage mm -hmm. ah and Roger Ebert named monster as the best film of the year and the third best film of the decade when it had come out afi wow. named it the one of the best 10 best films of the year. And she also garnered a number of awards and nominations, including best first feature at the 2004 independent spirits awards. So she is award winning sure while is. not having done anything as big as a superhero movie blockbuster. Right. Mm -hmm. She definitely comes with some credit behind her. Yeah. We're connecting back to arrested development again. Yeah. Which is, that's weird. I love, that's yeah. the glue it's, to it's, everything it's, it's, we love. Arrested development. <laughs> this is the shared universe that is going to lead to the DC Marvel crossover. And it's going to happen because yes. of the blues. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's, it's maritime law. It doesn't matter who owns the rights. <laughs> We should, of course, observe that Patty Jenkins is the first female director to run a high-profile superhero movie in the modern era and has knocked it out of the park. I don't, I don't want to observe movie. that she's the first because that is a failure on mankind. It is. It is. <laughs> but at least the first time but out of the But she knocked gate, it out of the park. We, she yeah. really, Absolutely. Really yes, has. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I credit her with every good thing in this film when it comes to that side of the creation. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think that's fair. Yeah. So let's talk about the cast, and I suppose yes, we should probably please. spend a minute on Gal Gadot. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Those were there lovely sighs, <laughs> not exasperation. No, no, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think I've sighed exasperatedly enough on this show to make a total difference. No, that was a very pleasant sigh. Gal Gadot is astonishing. She is yeah. absolutely magnificent. She is, um, she won Miss Israel at 18 and then she was in the army for like two years mm -hmm. and now she's mm -hmm. Wonder Woman and she <laughs> did, uh, you know, like a bunch of reshoots and stuff while she was five months pregnant. And like this woman amazing. is, she is Wonder Woman. She is Diana of Themyscira. And I, I mean, like from the second that she appeared on screen in Batman versus Super, I mean, like, okay, when I went to go see Batman versus Superman, I was so bored the yeah. entire time watching mm -hmm. this movie. I was like slouched in my chair, just like, God, how long are we going to be here? And until that music is, came on. Until that music years. came on. Da, 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 <laughs> yes, yes. Da, 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 da. Yeah, the theme song is called "Is She with You," uh, done by Hans Zimmer. <laughs> and uh, when she showed up, and suddenly I was on the edge of my seat, and I was like, Oh. Oh, excuse me. It's good now. We're having There's fun something now. Good in here. There's okay. something great it's happening. It's not a zero percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Look at her <laughs> smiling. Look at her kicking that guy's do Doomsday. Right. Look at yeah. her kicking Doomsday's ass and grinning about it. I'm assuming oh. that on Rotten Tomatoes it has somewhere around the twenty to twenty five percent. She is that twenty to yeah. twenty five percent. Yes, absolutely, she is. Um, and I remember going to uh, I was at a con here in uh, Oklahoma City, and there were some folks because the uh, I think that Batman versus Superman had just come out, and we had just gotten like the first. Wonder Woman teaser, I think. Mm -hmm. And there were some folks on this panel that were talking about how uh, they were really upset that Gal Gadot got cast as Diana. And one of the reasons listed was because she doesn't have blue eyes. Yeah. And Diana has blue eyes. I got so angry. I was like, this woman is so <laughs> fucking buff yeah. and a fantastic and a great actress. What are you even saying? Shut your mouth. She's perfect. And I hate you. You're <laughs> tacky and I hate I you. I don't think eye color has ever crossed my mind when it came to casting. <laughs> Literally not once. Unless ever. it had something to do, maybe, ever. maybe if the there's a superhero whose eye color meant something. Thing with the yeah. super the power. only time eye color has ever mattered, and Elizabeth is pointing at me because we both know, is Harry, Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Just give the kid contacts what is wrong with you. Because they mention it every fucking book. Every it, ha book. it has to actually matter. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Otherwise, it means <laughs> to nothing. Part of the narrative. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah, right. yeah. No. Right. For Wonder Woman, it means nothing. No. Absolutely right. nothing. So, Elizabeth, you're going into this movie mm -hmm. pretty cold. Did you see pretty Batman versus yeah. Superman? I did not. Okay. No. Yeah. Not the Lord had mercy on my soul. So and you hadn't I seen... escaped that movie somehow. We can pull up a YouTube <laughs> video of just her parts in it. <laughs> I, I would love to see that. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. So, how does Gal Gadot strike you immediately? Looking at the teaser images, looking at the trailer? Is she impressive? Yeah, no, I thought she was very impressive. And I actually, I quite like um, that she wasn't so, um, I, I guess, so built and so buff or cut or whatever that she seemed, um, I, that she seemed super just looking at her, mm -hmm. that she seemed, I, I want to identify with her. That's going to be the most important mm -hmm. thing. So I want her to look like someone, maybe not someone I could be, but at least someone that I could know. I hate how to get, you know, Captain America and Steve Rogers. Sure. He, okay, we've got to get this guy. He's a super soldier, so mm -hmm. he has to be obscenely jacked. The buffest I get Dorito. That. Like the buffest guy mm -hmm. ever. Sure, Dorito, absolutely. <laughs> but if you do Boy. that, I think, to Wonder Woman, then I think you lose some of that essence of her being uh, an every woman, mm -hmm. which is really important at least right now, I think, to the culture and to femininity. So I loved the casting. Um, mm. And she's also, not forget, 5'10". So she's yeah. still, like, she's got the Amazonian thing For sure. going yeah. on. But no, I think, I think she's beautiful, delightful, strong, fierce, playful. Yeah. I love her ready laughter. She has a oh, quick yes. smile. Mm -hmm. But she also, in those scenes where she is absolutely kicking ass, is completely fierce. Yeah. And I mean, I would be afraid of her. Oh, yeah. So, mm -hmm. That was my most pleasant surprise when it came to Gal Gadot was because seeing the trailer images for Batman vs. Superman, she looks the part. She yeah. looks mm -hmm. like she could be Wonder Woman. I'm into that. That's great. But she's also a terrific actress. Yes. She was yeah. perfectly able to carry the action sequences in BVS yes. and this entire movie with charm. And you're absolutely right, Elizabeth. I think playfulness and yeah. joy and a lightness of spirit that is 
a direct counterpoint to everything that we've seen from DC for the last yes. 15 years. Yeah, yeah. It's just astonishing. Like the ice cream line is so unnecessary. Line. And it's but wonderful. It's so, yeah. It's yeah, wonderful. It's absolutely you should wonderful. be very yes. proud. You should be very proud. Like, <laughs> yes, yes, but we never yes. play that off as a joke. We don't right. play it off with the ice cream no, or with the baby or with it. the revolving right. door. Right. Yeah. We it's never so make true. her the object of the joke. We're mm -hmm. always with Diana. Yeah. And, and I think that perfect. we see that too from, from the counterpart of, of Chris Pine's character of Steve Travers. Trevor. Trevor. Steve Trevor. Okay. Two first names. That's how you know it's a superhero story. Okay, so we see that from him because even in that scene with the ice cream, I quite like that, where he turns around he, and he's delighted by mm. by her and by her just simple joy and says, y you know, yeah, you should be very proud. Mm -hmm. And you can tell that he means that. Yeah. Like, you know, you're yeah. right. These little things, especially in wartime, mm -hmm. we should take a little time yeah. to acknowledge. Yeah, yeah. I like yeah. it very much. Speaking of Steve Trevor, this was played by Chris Pine. Chris Pine, who is widely known for his role as James T. Kirk in the franchise reboot of Star Trek. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. I like him. He does a good job yep. in this film. He's, he's perfectly fine with me. He did make me angry when he did an interview uh, promoting the film and then said some bad things about my Marvel films and acted like oh, a jerk out yeah. of ignorance because he would clearly had no idea that. what those films were aside from the names. <laughs> yes, this is when but. he's throwing shade at Marvel films for all being about war. Hey, Infinity War is coming up. It's just always about war. Do you know the main theme of the movie like, that you're in, Chris this, Pine? This is a war movie. We are yeah. super a war movie. This yeah. is more a war movie than any other superhero movie has yeah. And there's just no reason for there this really fighting. Isn't. It's no. enough of it on the internet between the fans. Yeah. We don't need the people making the movies to start it, too. Yeah. WWKFD, what would Kevin Feige do? Yes, because Kevin Feige <laughs> is a treasure when it comes to <laughs> celebrating the rivalry yes. of, the, of the companies, like celebrating the Wonder Woman specifically and mm -hmm. other things that DC doesn't say he wants them to succeed. Yeah. yeah. Great. I love yeah. it. We need wow. more of that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Chris Pine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm angry. Well, I am sorry to hear about that, but I thought that he was really wonderful in this role. It's an interesting role. I keep on trying to, to break down the character and why it works for me and why there are some moments where I don't understand him as well. Mm -hmm. And I think... I, I think it's not that again the tightest script in the world. I think mm -hmm. there are sometimes when it gets just a little bit. Uh, maybe they're trying not to be heavy hitting because they have a few lines that are, but they mm -hmm. stand apart because of that. I think just to to sell the point, and make sure. it home. And so because of that, I think that there are lots of times right. where people are kind of dancing around what they really want to say, mm -hmm. and his character does that more than anybody else. I think we were talking about this before we sat down to record, talking about the sequence in the middle of the movie where Wonder Woman crosses no man's land. Yes, and how in the theater we were all prepared, we were all clenched, waiting for. But I am no man. Right. And how it didn't come, and the movie That's managed good. to actually dodge. I think all of those bullets. I, I would it, not it say all, but yes. Maybe not all. <laughs> I think the one that it really hits is is deserved right at the end of the film. Yeah, the deserve and the love. Yeah, no, yeah. I believe in love is my very favorite fucking thing, and no one's going to take that away from me. And I realize no one's trying to. I'm just saying, like, disparage it all you want. It's, it's mine, and I'm going to keep it safe right we'll here in my there. heart. We'll get there. Yes, we we'll get there. We it's very important. Hippolyta was played by Connie Nielsen, known the best for her portrayal of Princess Lucilla opposite Russell Crowe in the... Uh, 2000 film Gladiator. She won Best Actress. Oh, damn! Uh, I didn't yeah. know that. From the Danish Academy Awards. Mm -hmm. I have loved her since that movie too. Yeah. I think that she is wonderful. She, yeah, she's, she's great. Hippolyta was amazing. She does Every, so all the good in this film. Does feel yes. a little bit like this is the role she was waiting to play, though, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. It feels like yeah. Gladiator was her audition piece for this movie. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, 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 no. Come back in 15 years. We have got the part for yeah, you. Yeah. Yes. Sure. Which it could have been because this movie has been in some version of pre-production since 2001. Oh, That's wow. how long this has been rolling around. There was a story. I don't know. 10 years ago. I don't know if you have the date, Vinton, when Joss Whedon was actually hired to write and direct a Wonder Woman movie yes. and left because of creative differences yeah. because he couldn't make it work yeah Here's i have thing. a bit wow. of a history when it comes to that the whole yeah. Yeah. In the moment we all know that i am a huge fan of joss whedon mm -hmm. i i love almost all of his work i always appreciate what he does i'm really glad that he didn't do this movie yeah Me too. because yeah. it would not have been nope. this movie no if it he certainly had. wouldn't have been and no. i think that yeah i just i'm so so glad that we had patty jenkins that we had the script writers that we had and that we've got um gal gadot in here and i mean like just yeah i'm glad that joss didn't touch this one go do bat woman or bat girl whatever it's gonna be great i'm gonna love it go do justice league go now, do justice league yeah. i will i will to. say i might have been okay with him doing some of the writing because those other writers I didn't, oh sure, I mean, sure whatever sure. like yeah. replacing yeah. Zack snyder i probably be okay with that. <laughs> well, sure, but yeah. Not but not directing. 
Keep right. your hands off of directing this right, one. Right, right, right. Let Patty direct. Joss could have written it. Yeah, let, sure, let that Patty been fine. write the next one as well. That I'm would saying. be really yeah. good. Yes. A very, very skilled writer. Yeah. Oh. I really want to talk about Robin Wright, though. Yes. This entire yes. Yes. Oh, my God. No, because for her the role Robin Wright Princess Bride? Bride? The Robinessance is my favorite thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah she great. was the Princess Bride. She was the Princess she was. Bride. She was also Ginny and Forrest Gump. But let's focus on she was <laughs> the Princess Bride. And she gets to now be a warrior. A yes. general. Yeah. The greatest, oh, what does so uh, Hippolyta say? The greatest warrior of our entire, yeah. Yeah. you know, gener- yeah. not just generation, but like yeah. in our, of all in the Amazon. Culture. In our history. Yeah, in yeah. Our yeah. history. And I feel like yeah. that like encapsulates what this movie means to There's so a many women. great meme going around on Twitter right now with a picture of Antiope and a picture of Leia. Yes. With the caption, all of my princesses grew up to be generals, uh, which I'm it's super big, into. It's, a it's big such a big deal. deal. Sometimes yeah. you get those moments of cultural vertigo, and you look back and you think, 20 years ago, this would have been literally unthinkable. Yeah. yeah. And now here we are. Yeah. It's pretty great. Yeah. We also have Danny Houston as Ludendorff, uh, known for his role in X Men Origins Wolverine, where he played William Stryker. That's mm-hmm. where I knew him from. Not that William Stryker, the X Men <laughs> yeah, Origins the Wolverine. Origins. Yeah. 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 What's yeah, yeah. different? <laughs> he was also on Maria Antoinette and Children of Men and played the Orson Welles and Fade the Black. We also have David Thuelis. 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 Yeah. I've never even know how to say yeah. that. Obviously, Lupin in Harry Potter, <laughs> Prisoner of Azkaban, yep. playing Sir Patrick. Also, today, Dragonheart. Don't forget today, Dragonheart. Tomorrow, he forever, was Dragonheart? Professor Lupin. Yeah. I haven't seen Dragonheart yeah. in, I don't know, yep, 20, nope. years, so. 20 years. Well, then at least. you definitely Just must. <laughs> yeah. Though I warn you, when you watch it, it will lead to me talking like Sean Connery for a week. Oh, well, then I, I, I know that's okay. Right 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 now, or is that like a teaser no. trailer? Is that a promise? <laughs> <laughs> Do you swear? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> we also have Samir played by an actor whose name I'm going to butcher, Saeed Takamori. Maybe? Don't know. Sounds He's good. mostly known for foreign films I don't know, so I'm not going to list them off. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ewan Brimmer plays Charlie, known for his role as Spud in Train Spotting. Yep. It immediately <laughs> stuck out to me. I was like, oh, that's Spud. Yep. What is he doing here? <laughs> and then you had Eugene Brave Rock playing the Chief, known for his roles in The Revenant and Hell on Wheels. Mm-hmm. And then Lucy Davis, who played Etta Candy. She's an actress producer known for her roles in Shaun of the Dead and the original British version of The Office. Who? Wait, oh. was she, she? She was a producer dawned. on Shaun of the Dead? No, she played in Shaun of the Dead. Yeah, she, it, very briefly. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, she's in Shaun of the Dead just for a moment, and it's really as a nod to that entire ensemble. Oh, but excellent. most famous as Dawn in the British version of The Office. That's yes. the British version of Pam, you guys. Right. Oh, oh yes. okay. Well, she was really? great. I wow. loved it. Yeah, no, she, every, God, everyone in this movie did a fantastic Lucy Davis yeah, is delightful. Really you will also know her from the 1995 BBC Pride and Prejudice, where she is yep. magnificent and in the background a lot. She's just great. She steals every scene that she's huh. in very quietly. I love her a lot. And finally, we have Dr. Maru, played by Elena Anaya, possibly? Known for her starring role alongside Antonio Banderas and Pedro Almodovar's The Skin I, I Live In. Oh, she was lovely. I liked she her was. a lot. I, I yeah. actually like her a lot as an actress. Yes. I wish... I wish too. Yeah, yes. yeah. I we'll wish that, that. We'll yeah. we both we'll drew a breath. At the same yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wish that they would have done more. With done her. something with yeah, this. I, yeah. yeah, done something. I mean, yeah. okay, yeah, she's building all these bombs. Great, whatever. You could have had anybody building mm. the bombs. I wouldn't have cared one way or the other. But if you're going to present me with, I mean, we've already got our female lead, yeah. our female protagonist, our yep. female superhero. Why? Should we wait to get to this? Cover? Let's just go ahead and have it now. Why was Dr. Maroon not Aries? Yeah. Why I was don't know. Lupin Aries? Why? I don't know. When you said why was why wasn't she Aries? I was like, <gasps> yeah. because yeah. that's such okay. a good yeah, idea. Said, like so, the face mask. And you yes, exactly. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. so I saw this movie twice, and the first time I saw it, I mean, I'm so terrible about picking stuff out in films. I just take everything at face value, whatever. Um, but like the uh, when the first time I was watching it, so she kills Ludendorff, and then she's like, oh, that wasn't Aries. What's going on? And I like gasped aloud because I was like, oh my god, they're gonna make Doctor Maru Aries because she's got like the scarring oh, on her face, yeah. and that's the wound that was left by Zeus I was like this is amazing and then in limps Lupin and I'm like wait what (laughs) that's the decision we're are are you sure there are two ways you can go one is to make her Aries but the other is to allow Diana to connect with her that's what I was hoping for she just disappears another female character disappearing from the climax of a superhero movie and we really have no idea very disappointing I wonder if she's going to be the Armin Zola of yeah, Justice League oh, or that whatever. Would be fun. She that just would be good. Somehow preserves herself for a hundred years and comes back as an antagonist. But sure, gives herself some little magic gas juice. That sure, yeah, yeah. Could be, I mean, could she be. could certainly yeah. make it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Also, by the way, in the DCU, we now have magic gas that makes you super strong. 
just we have yeah. that. We yeah, have that's exists. just the thing that exists. Well, fine. and that was the thing. Totally I thought, fine. Right? Yeah, like I thought that part Batman of the reason. gonna have that. <laughs> I think he does. Um, I don't know if he can listen. If he can take a rock of kryptonite and turn that into a gas, what? There are no rules. We're this. We're playing Calvin Ball with everything. We're just doing whatever the hell we want. It's fine. Um, but yeah, whenever she like had the gas that she was giving to Ludendorff, I was like, oh, well, she's able to do that because she's the god of war. Yeah. It is like powering him with the power of war and hatred and just, sure, it sure. was a real missed opportunity, I felt like. Was yeah. anyone surprised that Ludendorff wasn't Ares? Did that reveal? No. no. Yeah. Not until right before he died. Okay. Oh, yes. That's all right. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. The whole time I was like, no. Okay. Well, like, because I was arguing with myself, right? I'm like, okay, is it really? It's probably not. I bet we're going to pull somebody else in. But then we weren't, like, really bringing anybody else no. in. Oh. Except for Dr. Maru being there. So then he dies. And I was like, oh, shit, it's this. And then it wasn't. And yeah. then, again, yeah, here comes Sir Patrick. And I was like, you... I've seen you three times already. Yeah. This is, this is, I, I did, yeah. And yeah. to be fair, I think there is a legitimate feminist critique of the climax of the movie where Wonder Woman has the tank and Dr. Maru is on the ground. And mm -hmm. here where this is the trope that you can find on tvtropes.org called breaking the cutie, where you take an attractive woman, you give her some kind of disfiguring quality and she becomes an object of vulnerability and protection. Mm. You're using her to manipulate the other oh. characters and to manipulate the emotions of the audience. That is... That is tropey, that is hacky, and it is honestly undeserving of this film. Yeah. I think yeah. that it, it was one of the very few fracture points for me in my enjoyment of this movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was no thoughtfulness to that scene at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we get to yeah. it. But first, let's go through some <laughs> trivia. This film has been in development since 1996 when Ivan Reitman was hired to write and direct it. In January 2001, Silver Pictures announced that Todd Elcutt to write in the Wonder Woman script, and he was replaced in August 2003 with... Leita Caligritis? I don't know these names. How can I pronounce Lita anything? Leita Caligritis, I think, because it's Greek. So <laughs> presumably yeah, Leita yeah. Caligritis. Patty Jenkins was in talk with WB to direct the film back in 2005, but due to her unexpected pregnancy, she had to step down. In March 2005, Joss Whedon was hired not only to write, but also to direct. But then February 2007, he left due to creative differences. On November 24th, 2014, Michelle McLaren was confirmed as director, but she dropped out in March Gosh. of 13th, 2015, due to creative differences. And then we got the film that we know. Wow, like the so little was, movie that could. Uh, yeah, this was like seriously in production hell for forever. Wow. I like that perspective. It's the little movie that could. Person, <laughs> I think you I know can. what I think movie I you can. got made? Good for you. Because the other perspective is, oh, Zack Snyder's the only person who's willing to work with DC. <laughs> this is why he gets everything. <laughs> that makes so much Everyone more sense. Like, no. Everyone else I is like, no. I want to do a happy movie. Wait, let me check my backyard. No, I have a pool. I'm good. Thank you. I don't need to do this film. <laughs> One of the interesting things that should be pointed out is that along with Marston and the Marston family being uh, attributed to creating Wonder Woman, one of the people that they're thanked as a contributor is George Perez, who mm. is really prominent in the comic book world for taking Wonder Woman and attaching her so closely to Greek mythology and making Ares mm. her arch enemy and doing some of the other things that we do see in the film before okay. Azarello even had a yeah. hand in it. Nice. So he is really uh, to thank for a lot of that type of Wonder Woman mm -hmm. that, that because we see. Because for much of her publication history, Wonder Woman's mythic origins have kind of been hand waved away. She came from Paradise Island. There's a lovely name drop of Paradise Island uh -huh. in the script for this film, which I enjoyed very much. Uh -huh. I think it was the only one in the theater who enjoyed it. I wondered why you but laughed really so hard it. then. Yeah, I was like, was yeah, okay. Me. I mean, it was a real pretty but place. What for you much think, of babe? her history, she has been very closely identified with America. Much like Superman, yeah. she is the outsider who has been kind of co-opted by American culture, yep. which is why we're having this toxic little spat on Twitter and on Fox News right now about whether this movie is American enough. Oh, oh shit. Wonder Woman is not American. Nope. She She's, has yeah, no obligation to be American. Did you hear the accent? It's fine. As a matter of fact, Gal Gadot has such a strong accent that they gave everyone on the island that accent to, to match her. I Which is love that so choice. Is that yes. what love happened? That, that is a yep. great yes. choice. Yes. It's fantastic. One of the major differences in this film and the comics is that Steve and Diana actually meet in the second world war, but they changed it to the first one. I assume the main reason for this is because they didn't want too many comparisons to Captain America there because there's already, already so a lot to be drawn. Good job, Good there's job a dodging lot. that bullet. Really, there's really a nothing. soldier named Steve. <laughs> he jumps in a plane to save everyone. The plane does not make it. <laughs> I wanted them to be on the radio, though. <laughs> Actually, I really like the decision to move this back to the First World War because yes. she was involved in the Second World War because of her publication history, because it was the yeah. early right. 1990s yeah. and all superheroes were engaged in the Second World War. Moving it back to the First World War, the war to end all wars, That's makes a lot of thematic yes. and mythic yes. sense. Yes. So that yes. works for me very well. Did Wonder Woman ever punch Hitler? 
Yes, I'm yes. sure that she did. Excellent. I cannot cite an issue number, but I am certain that she did. <laughs> Perfect. I hope so. Yes. <laughs> One of the interesting facts that Sarah already found out, which I'm a little sad about because I wanted to push this fact to, toward her during the podcast, <laughs> is that for the Japanese dub of the film, Wonder Woman is voiced by Katona Mitsuyoshi. Best known as the voice of Sailor Moon. Yes. Oh, Which is well, absolutely the right call. So perfect. Yeah, I know. It's, it's doubly perfect because Sailor Moon also has this mythical backstory. Is a, a princess of yeah. the, yeah, a Greco Roman mythical backstory. Oh. Uh, is a princess and is a warrior for love and justice and truth. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah, Do yeah, it then. Yeah. Power of friendship. The power of friendship. Also, like my first ever superhero, like as a human yeah. growing up, Sailor Moon. And now I've got like the hardcore grown up Sailor Moon, which is Diana <laughs> And I'm very excited about it. It should be known, and I should have said this earlier, that the ice cream scene in this film is actually taken directly from the comic book, uh, specifically by Jeff Johns, The New 52, mm -hmm. Justice League number three, where Wonder Woman does that sa has that same exact exchange with a, an ice cream vendor. That's darling. So that's another you should be so proud. <laughs> I love the face she makes too when she tastes the ice cream. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's like the first time you've ever had like good job, Gal Gadot. Yeah. It's like the first time you've mm. ever had ice cream. Oh, God. It's so good. Also, yeah. I think it's it just excellent. a good lesson. I mean, like, we should just people should be proud of the things that they do and the work yeah. that they do and the things that they make. And I think that it's important to just tell people that. Diana is <laughs> not is. afraid to tell yeah. people yeah. that you ought to be proud about what you do. And Absolutely. I just God, she's yep. the hero that we need. <laughs> <laughs> As a final fact, it should be noted that General Eric L Ludendorff uh -huh. was an actual historical figure. What? And his portrayal in this film is based on the Duke of Deception, which I guess is a nod to the fact that he's not actually Ares, guys. <laughs> Oh, that's so, really clever. <laughs> yeah. That's like awesome. That. Uh -huh. So now we are ready to dive through the story of this film. Yes. We should Smash. say that, Sarah, you have seen this movie twice. Twice. Elizabeth twice. Twice. Benton, once. And I've seen it once. I wanted mm -hmm. to see it twice, and I did not. <laughs> what a coincidence. The women have seen it, right it right twice. Now. Men have seen it once. What up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So let's go through the story of this film. We start off with Diana in modern day France as she gets an old war photo from. Bruce Wayne. How do you guys feel about this framing sequence? I liked it. The present day. I was okay with it because I know, I mean, uh, yeah, it didn't bother me at all. It worked for me just fine. Yeah. The more Gal Gadot I get to see on screen, the happier yeah. I am. <laughs> mm, I didn't particularly think it was necessary at all. I wish we'd done away with it, especially since she was just in the Batman versus Superman movie. Mm -hmm. So yes. we know. We know she's still around. We know she's doing her thing. So I don't think that we need it at all, mm -hmm. personally. That's exactly the thing for me, is that without BVS, this is completely unnecessary. This and the end cap. True. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you're right. But with BVS, we only know Wonder Woman in modern day. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so there needs to be something coming off of BVS to connect it to say, hey, this is the same Wonder Woman. Let's flash yeah. back now. Mm-hmm. I guess. Well, I mean, we did the same thing in uh, the first Avenger, right? Because we yes. open with the guys finding the shield. Yes, exactly. yeah. it's the exact, yeah. That's much worse, it's though. The, it's, the, it's, the, it's the exact same type of bookend, though, where you start in the future and then you end in the, in, right. you start right. in the present yeah. and end in the present with a flashback yeah. film. I loved Cap coming out in Times Square. Like that part yes. works really well. But again, you don't have to. You don't have to bookend it. And I think sure. that that's yeah. the problem that we're getting is that people just feel like, well, this is the way that it's done. Um, I did not think that was necessary. Also, I have a very important question. In the end, when she jumps off the building. She flies now? Now we're flying? No, she's just jumping. I don't think it's she's just flying. It's just a real good jump into, into the, the river. Is, but it's a slow yes. motion, long, large jump for some reason. Because well, here's she the heard thing. an ice cream truck and she really likes ice cream. <laughs> she yeah, loves I'm not ice sure cream. what the this hell is, is going on. Yeah, no, like, like it was a good, like her midair with the shield, it's a good shot. Yeah. Right. But I what? No, it's cool looking. I think that's another nod to the old Superman movie and the shots of him flying. And that's what I felt. That's possible. Also, depending on which comic you're reading, she does, I mean, depending on which version of Wonder Woman you're looking at, she does have the power of flight. Right. Yeah. Oh. She actually can't fly. Sometimes and sometimes she Yeah. So far, what we've seen in the DC EU, there's an extra like syllable you got to throw in Why? there. The DC Extended Universe. Ah, mm -hmm. okay. Um, but uh, so far, it looks like we're making her very much how Superman was when he was first introduced in the comics, which is just can leap a tall building in a single right. bound, so and it doesn't and look like as though yeah. we're giving her actual flight powers. But in the com in the comics that I've read, no, she super can fly. That's just the yeah. thing she can. Yeah. do. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. I don't think they're gonna give us a flying Wonder Woman because it's too close to Superman's like right. primary power. That exactly. is what yeah. distinguishes him in the DCU right now. Mm -hmm. So I think they're gonna hold that back. Him, Everyone else can just through. jump well, I mean, real, real good. You know, okay, the Hulk real good can jumping. basically fly in yeah. Avengers. He's I falling mean, with like the idea that <laughs> When you jump, when she jumps, her legs are slightly bent, whereas Superman's flying, he, he's straight out. So this gives me the idea that I really want the joke to be made somewhere that, that people look at her flying through the air with her legs slightly bent and go, she must have an invisible jet. <laughs> 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 I want that to be a I joke somewhere. I am so glad 
that the Invisible Jet is not a thing anymore. I gotta yeah. say, I mean, as someone who hard. wants Justice League to be good, I want all the DC movies to be good. I actually like the framing sequence here because I yeah. like the idea that we're developing a relationship between Diana and Bruce. I like the he idea that He needs a buddy and he, he doesn't desperate, freaking he have anyone. <laughs> and he needs a buddy to, to pull him out of his birthing a little exactly. bit. Exactly. <laughs> this is what I'm hoping. I think we're going to get a debruited Batman for Justice League. Not unbrooded. But but deep rooted. Yes, I think he's going to be less. Bruce. It's turned from an eleven shadowy. down to like an eight or a nine. Yeah, exactly. So then we flash back to Diana on her Amazon island, wanting to train to be a warrior like the other women. Mm -hmm. But her mother, the queen, is not so sure about this and wants to keep her daughter safe. The little girl who plays young Diana is awesome. She's super dark. She, I think yes. the word adorbs was invented for this young lady. I believe so, yes. Believe so. She's absolutely great. Uh, uh, my husband was talking about how much, you know, like this girl, like just is precocious and like you know right. very does i mean just like is all of the good things that diana is and she just did an astonishing job i was i i loved every second of it this is emily carey who has done uh basically a bunch of british television oh she's 12 years old 12 wow years which old. means that she was what like 10 when they did the film that yeah. seems about right yeah. When you look at someone <laughs> on IMDb and it says born April 30th, 2003, and you think, no, that what must the be a fuck? typo. That's a, but you what? can't have an IMDb. What, 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 no one's what? born after oh. 2000. And then you You're open another beer baby. and you go on with your life. Mm -hmm. Because that's what being an adult is, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> then Diana learns the story of the gods, of the god killer weapon to destroy Ares specifically. Mm -hmm. So here we have like our second... I mean, we're getting a lot because uh, we've got the the bookends where we've got okay, here we are in France, and then it's like okay, here we are in Themyscira, okay, and then also here's some extra narration about like the gods and how right. Themyscira came to be and all of this. This is where I feel like we should have started. Yeah, yeah. with an animated sequence too, it feels a lot like the opening of yeah. you know Thor or something. Yeah, you get this, this mm -hmm. voiceover telling us this ancient mythic history. It's important. We need it. Mm -hmm. Is this the best way to do it? I thought this was beautiful, actually. Yeah. I love the art style, that like it is Renaissance gorgeous. art. Yes. God, it was mm -hmm. so yeah, gorgeous. Yeah. No, I loved that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, I, I quite enjoyed watching that scene. Again, I would have happily, I would have happily lost the Louvre yeah. for opening right here. Yeah. I thought the shots of Paris are so beautiful. Yeah, but talking about beautiful, this island is so bright yeah. and it's so right. refreshing. Yeah, the island, for so the much DC. color. I need to go on yeah. vacation right now yeah. right, right now, now. <laughs> i Goodbye. want white peacocks yes. i want waterfalls <laughs> yep. i want phosphorescent hot springs pools and just women Chris everywhere Pine. that would be fine also all the women yeah sure yeah can we also talk about just super quick so when uh wonder woman shows up in uh bvs her uh outfit because this entire movie was toned down to like sepia and black and white basically mm -hmm. um but even her outfit there is not it's not very colorful like it's all very very bronzy yeah. um yeah. Mm -hmm. and i love that in this movie we straight up are getting the red and the blue and the gold and it is bright and colorful yeah, right. and she's the like the prettiest and most colorful thing on the battlefield i love that i love that we did not shy away mm. from that yeah. at all it's great did any of you guess that she was going to be the god killer and not the sword is that was that pretty obvious or i did not guess that okay. uh, I, I leaned I over to my wife and said it yes. of, yeah. when antiope dies Yes. yes. Yeah. And yeah. says yeah. Diana, it's, it's God killer. Diana, God killer. Yeah. <laughs> Which I caught the second time I watched it. <laughs> yeah. The first time I was just like, no, she's telling her to get the sword. This is what we do. This is good. Uh, yeah. Diana does get the permission of her mother to train with Antiope and fiercely so. And one day unleashes this great power from her bracers, uh, hurting Antiope. And that's when Steve crash lands just off the shore, bringing the warring Germans to the island. Mm -hmm. And Antiope is killed during this battle. Training montage is super fantastic and, and yeah. so much fun. This is when yes. we oh, yeah. first saw these kind of like the acrobatic flips that the yeah. Amazons mm -hmm. do, which is fucking gorgeous, yeah. you guys. Right. I flip loved wizards. the fight scenes. Any any sequence with either Diana or the Amazons, the fight sequences were gorgeous, yes. including the training yes. battles. I loved the fierceness married to the femininity so much. Yeah, yeah. Like it was a yeah. very, uh, it was like, watching a dance or like it watching really was. gymnastics yeah. it was mm -hmm. like watching but, women but kicking not ass performative like there's, but not there's performative. nothing about it that feels no. authentic they are fighting. yes like it's not when you know people do uh i don't know like three backflips on sure. power rangers or something they're like this <laughs> right. is obviously just you know just for the funsies yes no this this was um th there was something about it. it it was like watching um yeah, like watching a dance, but also like the deadliest ballet. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but there was something about it that, that was true to the form of the fighting for mm -hmm. a powered because they're obviously like, you know, somewhat super powered, mm -hmm. all of them more, more than than the average um, human, I suppose. Um, part of that that style that is just 
of course it's the way you would do it. Of course yes. you would use everything that you have yeah. um, as your advantage. And part of their advantage is this grace and this beauty in the movement. Yeah. Oh God, mm -hmm. I loved it. Loved yeah. watching it. I've yeah. noticed watching superhero films with you, Elizabeth, that when a fight sequence starts, that's generally when Twitter calls your attention and you take yep. out your phone and you're like, you're absolutely right. You seemed really engaged through this entire movie. And when I saw it for the first time, you were watching it for the seconds. So you already right. knew what was coming and you still seemed hooked by the action. More so actually the second time, because um, I, I found that the movie I, I enjoyed most the first time around. However, I saw it the second time in 3D and I was a little bit like, oh, I have to see it in 3D. I guess that's fine because yeah. I'm not a fan. Um, and I also, I wear glasses. So yeah. glasses on top of glasses is just never it's fun. A it's ass, a pain yeah. in the ass. It is. Yeah. So I was like, no, this is fine. It's good. It's fine. Um, however, those scenes were obviously very carefully orchestrated for 3D because they oh were. God, they look amazing. Gorgeous. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's the thing. Yeah. If you've CGI. not seen it in 3D yeah. yet, do it. Right. The best way to use 3D is when it's. <clears throat> When it's done with CGI specifically, like yeah. actually filming, it's really kind of hard to do and hard sure. to make look really mm -hmm. well. But when it's CGI, it can be done so perfectly and because yeah. those fight scenes had so much CGI. And you can yeah. you can tell a little bit at certain times where it's like, yeah. oh, that just went from being a person to a, a computer model. Yes. Uh, but that never bothered me. I heard some other people complain about that. I never, they did it really well, I thought. And yeah. the 3D in those moments is so perfect. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, and there were moments in the battle, specifically, I think of when the woman's riding by and she's got the spear and she does that thing where she leans all the way back into a back bend with yeah. the spear. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of strange looking yeah. um, and slowed down for no reason. It's because in 3D, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, it's really? It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I like the slowdown a lot better than some of the other superhero movies where they try to do things yeah. really fast yeah. and it yeah. like messes with the frame rate just I've... so they want to show the, a lot of the fights. They yeah, I really wanted to ask about here. this because we've just been talking about the Captain America trilogy. The last two movies are produced by the Russos and they, they do a lot of practical effects. Yes. A lot of those fight sequences are choreographed within an inch of their lives that we get long takes, which is mm -hmm. great because you get to see these actors actually beating the hell out of each other. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. Wonder Woman doesn't do the long take thing. Mm -hmm. it's, it is very choppy and very cut in the, the mm -hmm. typical kind of visual language for mm -hmm. superhero movies. But what is conspicuous is the speed ramping when we get these right. moments of extreme slowdown I times with a transition those. to CG. Yeah. Is, is that true to your experience generally? Is that a I technique so, yeah. that you really like? Yeah, well, gosh, what was the last, I mean. BVS. Uh, yeah, BVS or like 300 is something else yeah. that I think of. And generally, 300, sure. yeah, generally I don't think that, I mean, generally I don't really care, I guess, but in this, because it was like, Look at these women. Look no. at all. I was of these. just thinking, is this how men felt when they saw three hundred? It has to be how it men felt when they saw three hundred, yeah. oh, right? No, no, it wasn't. <laughs> maybe not you, darling, because you're a god of men. But yeah, maybe not you guys. <laughs> but the general, like, like <laughs> general <laughs> amped up white guy. Average. That's right. This do you remember? Do you Wonder remember <laughs> going out for Halloween after the three hundred and like every freaking guy was like in the three hundred outfit, like everybody's a Spartan. Like I feel like that's gonna be Halloween this year. Like every woman's gonna be. Wonder Woman. Are the Wonder you Woman costume? Wonder Woman? Fuck yes, I am. Are you kidding me? <laughs> if I can find the Wonder Woman in costume, I'll Let's be Wonder Woman. Let's all be Wonder Woman. <laughs> all all Wonder Woman. <laughs> so say we all. So, so okay, so that's the all. October Excelsior live show that we we'll do on YouTube, <laughs> yes. in which we're all dressed as Wonder Woman. Yes, that'll excellent. be fine. That'll it'll be, be perfect. Fine. No, it'll, it'll be fine. fine. I'm serious. We're setting a Patreon goal this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, the slow motion thing does bother me, but I think it worked perfectly. Yeah, for yeah this no, film. I totally loved it. I don't think I've seen it done better than I've, than I've no. seen it. No, it was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So I totally agree. All of the training sequences are really great, but I mean that. That beach battle. That beach okay, battle. before we else. get to the beach battle. Damn it. Okay. We'll get to it in just one second. Right. Hey, yeah. Steve Trevor, how are you at flying planes? Not so good, huh? Bad, not, so good. not so good at flying beach planes? Beach battle. <laughs> beach battle. I basically just had the joke. I do love, though, the sequence when he's uh, when he's sinking into the water oh, and the plane yeah. breaks. Oh, yeah. yeah. And we get to, he yeah. looks up and we see her standing on it's the wreckage so on the surface. Yeah. <laughs> Breathtaking. She yeah. is yes. properly mythic. She is, yes. she is a demigod yeah, yeah. character. Well, and I also appreciate it. the first time we see the Chris Pine character, He they have his hair falling in his face and it's like, almost like a straight little bowl cut. He yeah. looks so boyish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He looks like he needs to be saved. And yeah. I really appreciate that. They mm -hmm. didn't have to do that. Yeah, that's really, 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 really good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Beach battle. Yeah. <laughs> All so right. Freaking good. I'm so glad that the German ship came through. Yes. Because that's not something that you've ever really seen in the comics before. It's usually just Steve Trevor who just randomly yeah. here and needs to return to his earth. And mm -hmm. uh, so the fact that they brought the battle to the shore. Yeah. So awesome. I thought that scene wouldn't have shown up way, until way later in the film somewhere. So glad that we opened yeah. pretty much with this yeah. great battle scene of seeing these Amazonians 
open up on these soldiers. Yes. 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 They have guns, and these Amazons are like, nope, don't care. I'm going to come at you with my horse and my spear. Yeah. yeah. And no, like no launching fear. the arrows into the mountain so that they can then like swing that's down. Cool. That's very so cool. That's so fucking cool. cool. And you know that why cool that's so cool to me? Because like that was forethought. <laughs> that's like, we're thinking about our island. It's like, yes. we have these cliffs yes. though. If we need to get to the beach right away, we need a this way to do it. this. Yeah. How, and like, that's part of your practice. Like, that's yep. what you do. Like, yep. no, no, you have to know exactly how to do this. I really wanted to be a moment in Justice League when Batman uses his grapple gun and Diana just shrugs because she's seen it before. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. It's not that impressive. We're not there yet, but I've when she climbs the tower, oh my God. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. get there. Um, but yeah, I love how all of the Amazons are working together. I love whenever Antiope yells shield and I love Holy smokes, okay, was that cool. That, that was, cool. first of all, it was the coolest <laughs> fucking thing for yes. her to like leap up and spin around and then shoot those three guys. But the really cool thing is that the movie takes the time to show us that Steve sees that yes, so that he can I use it later. Love yes. It would have been really easy to leave that out and then it happens later. It's like, oh, well, he was on the beach whenever, you know, it right. happened. Yeah. So, but yeah. no, like he is like watching this and sees this. Yeah. And as soon as he- And is impressed as hell. Yeah, yeah. impressed yes. as hell. And then later yells at Diana, which I mean, like this is, this is part of the training. Everyone practices the shield move and yeah. knows exactly what it is. I also really like the reverse trope where he's just watching as he's being saved. That's yeah. a fight yeah. being done by a woman rather than the normal action movie trope of the woman just gets saved and she stands by watching as the man fights. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's completely flipped. I love no, it. We set that agenda very early and very emphatically yes. in this movie and yeah. we stick with it all the way through. Mm -hmm. I very much like their, their relationship. I think that Steve Trevor might very quietly, and obviously I need to mm -hmm. see the movie like five more times, but I mm -hmm. think he might very quietly be extremely smart which is a quality that oh, he value is very smart. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And as a spy, he would have to be. No, yeah. I think yes. he is extremely smart. Could you say that again, Benton? Were you saying that you felt that Steve stood aside as he was rescued? Yeah, when, at the beginning, I think it's mostly out of shock. He just watches as From the women the rock, fight. Sure, yeah. Oh, and, I also would so, be shocked and, and just and watching so, that. Yeah. And that's the reversal of the normal trope you have where right. a woman is saved in an action movie and then she sits by and like watches as the man fights. Okay. Mm -hmm. He doesn't jump back in until uh, Antiope gets shot and Diana runs over to her and then right. that's when he grabs the gun, shoots the a soldier yeah, and then runs because over to her. Diana specifically is in danger. She doesn't know that she's in danger because she's grieving for Antiope and it's only okay. then that Steve picks up the weapon and, and joins the fray, which yeah. is, you know, a bold choice because you're a guy with a gun on this beach. Yeah, and all yes. yeah. yeah. Amazon yeah. number like all the other German guys. Guys. <laughs> Oh my God, good call. No, yeah. I didn't think about He's that. I got a little word when I, think, I, I think, got a little word. That's the thing. I think it's purposeful. I think yeah. that that yeah. is supposed to show his courage is that, mm -hmm. that no one here is going to discriminate between him and these other men dressed identically. They're all men. All yeah. holding yeah. guns. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a really good point. Beautifully done. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. See, the thing that I appreciated so much, I think, about the two of them in this movie is that they fought side by side so beautifully. Yes. That they equally respected one another and were just right just right. seemed to realize and it took him some time to get sure, used to that naturally which is natural from sure. where he comes from that is yes. absolutely natural yes. that it would take him a little bit of time but he does learn absolutely and then i love that they fight side by side and respect one another's competence through the whole thing mm -hmm. i really like competence that. but not necessarily power i love that we don't yes. superpower steve trevor just to make him you know sure. in any way worthy of diane right well that's the whole thing is that We'll get there when we get there. We'll get there when we get there. Yeah, but that, no, that's, Not about that deserving, the Sarah. Point. That's the whole fucking point of the movie. Okay. So Steve tells of the world war and his role in it, having stolen Dr. Poison's notebook. And I love the last of truth here. It's, mm -hmm. it's used to great effect. I love Pretty the way fun. it looks on the screen, the way it glows. Yeah. Yeah, no, the effect is fantastic. Um, the scene misses a little bit for me in that I feel like they're trying to make it funny, but it's not funny they're not they never commit to the funny in this movie so you always chuckle a little but you never laugh outright did you notice that <laughs> interesting i can, yeah. I can see that. i yeah, laughed yeah, outright yeah. but yeah. i emote bigly you are, so. that yeah. i feel like there I were like a lot of laugh out loud moments and then snyder put his coating over it so they uh, brought all the laughter right. down a little bit <laughs> Then we get the scene where Steve is naked bathing and Diana learns I don't remember that scene. Watch. Say it again slower. <laughs> yeah, one more time. Steve is naked bathing himself mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In, the, in the pools. Would you say that uh, you are a general depiction of yourself? <laughs> okay, so this has been controversial. Yeah, I so, think it's funny. I love I think, I it's, think adorable. it's Are we unanimous on this that this yes. is not actually, well, A, it's not even really a dick joke. No, no, no. not at all. That both, the first time I didn't think of it at all. Mm -hmm. right. the, the thing about the watch is a little bit and stupid, and I could have done without that. Where he's like, "What? What's this? What's this? You know what? What? I hate? Oh, a watch." That's dumb. Because by that point, he's standing and you know right. cupping. Yep. And when she says, "What's that?" and he looks down, his watch is like eight feet it's away stupid. from him. It's dumb. He's not looking at his watch, and no, she's obviously no. not looking at yeah. his watch either. And then, yeah, and then there's the obvious. He had been wearing his watch. 
That joke would have worked so much better. Yeah. Oh but my then god! The, was, if he's wearing his watch, then there's the obvious your watch in a hot tub, you guys. <laughs> hey, he wore his watch when he was I don't know forty feet underwater. Okay, but he <laughs> crashed his plane because he's a bad it's liar. Very, <laughs> that's, that's a good point. Good point. Why are you trying to bad save it from the water now? <laughs> <laughs> it's obviously maybe he hasn't noticed that it's not working anymore. No, but it's still ticking. It's still he even said that. Yeah. But then they have to take it that much further with the dialogue. If yeah. him explaining what the watch is, oh, it tells time. It tells you when to sleep, when to eat. And she goes, that tiny thing tells you what to do. Speaking, obviously, of yes. like a penis and oh. a watch. Like, I mean, your penis tells you what to do. As a I miss that entirely. Don't it's, like that reading. Okay. Not great. I think, but. I think Chris Pine really saved the scene because that could have been so smarmy and arrogant yeah. and just like, I mean, it, it could have been. I could have hated this guy. I, I, will I could have hated this agree guy. With that. Yeah. I, it was an eye roll moment for me that the joke was made at all. But Chris Pine, like the way it was directed, I assume. Again, I'm giving all positive things to the director in this <laughs> because film. Because you like Chris Pine right now. The way it was directed <laughs> in this film was played really well. He wasn't yeah. smart. I mean, he played mm -hmm. it off really well. He played it off respectfully and everything, I think. Yeah. I, I think I he was. I think he was just, he, he had to consider, like, maybe I should probably be humble in this moment. However... She's asking a sincere and honest question, and I should give her a sincere and honest. She's answer. never seen a real life penis before, and she just saw mine. I don't think it was about a penis that at all, though. I really don't think. I think. Do you think it was like was... the whole physique? Yeah, it was okay, like the whole fair. package. Cool. I like, like to think it's it was... about the whole everything. It, it's yeah. about all that he is as a man. He absolutely, is his above courage, average. His, his courage, smarts, his integrity, his, body. his will. Yeah, I completely agree. That's absolutely how I read it, and I think, I think that's what they were going for. It's certainly what I think, at least what I think Chris Pine delivered right. mm -hmm. was that thoughtful moment where he's thinking about it and decides to tell the truth and says, you know, I am above average, not, you know, I'm the best that ever lived and not the, the main thing that bothers me about it is something that kind of bothered me a little bit through the film. I think it's handled well enough, but it kind of bothers me that she's so naive to a lot of things when she's so well read later mm -hmm. on, we hear that she's read all these volumes on sex, but she doesn't know if a man is an average looking man or not, but she's read all these volumes on sex. So oh, she that knows makes about, sense. No, because, no, like, so to me, yeah, if yeah, there no, were exactly. illustrations, the only thing, the only thing that like bothers me about it is that it seems like there's no narrative reason for it other than the penis joke. That's fair. I think it is inessential, but it does to me pass the cap test. Because if she had asked that question of Steve Rogers, if Steve Rogers had crashed a plane, which also he's pretty good at doing, by the way. He is pretty good at doing it. If he'd been in the hot tub and she had said, are you an average specimen? He would have given the same answer. Yeah, and with if that it's same good enough for Cap, it's good point. enough for me, you guys. No, I like so that. So say like we that. all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I would like to go on record again for saying I do not think it was a penis joke. So I think the watch stuff was, but I don't think the art would the you say that you're an average. Okay. I really don't think so. No, I'm into it either. Yeah, I, I like, like it that. It works reading. for me yeah. no matter what the reading, frankly. <laughs> sure. I enjoyed it. Moving on. Okay. <laughs> so Diana decides she must go kill Ares to end this great war and leaves with Steve. Mm-hmm. We get that really beautiful, excellent, amazing moment between Hippolyta and Diana, whenever Hippolyta is telling her, you have always been my greatest love, and today you are my greatest sorrow. And it's just like, shit, thanks, Mom. Well, I don't like that. Yeah, was that a beautiful moment? I, 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 mean, I liked like, Hippolyta the whole way through. That's a gut punch moment is what Do that not is. like. Yeah. 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 Prior to that, though, we get breaking she, into the tower. The breaking into Which the tower. Which is so good. Yep. Yes. Yeah. So oh, that was amazing. So and well again, done. so great from Gal Gadot when she gives us that just like delight She's in her so own power. That yeah. she She's made it. just well, yeah. excited. We keep doubling down on that because before she jumps across to the tower, she tests how far can I jump? Yeah. How far yeah, can sure. I do this? And mm -hmm. that's joyous and she's reveling in being a she superhero she's is. reveling in being powered and capable uh, it's so good and then yes. you're so right awesome. the jump is great across when the whatever brick that breaks. weird little brick that you put there just so that diana can catch it the when she's jumping brick, across the chasm one, why why, no, is there, I, no, no, why? I, I do believe that it is a design thing that is across the entire tower I yeah think there that, like, are there were more over, of them i think i think you can see there, more of them on either side i think it is a design thing and she falls and saves herself by yes. smashing her hand into the <laughs> yeah. wall and being so again joyous and delighted yeah. about it yeah. like yes seen, look what i can do yeah we've seen male superheroes do this all the time yeah. i think we see peter parker do it in every spider-man yeah, movie and i'm always into it i mean like uh -huh. we always see like guys get these powers get to test their powers and are super stoked yep. and this it's is true. the and first then their time uncles die, and fairness, then their uncles I mean. die or their parents whatever <laughs> don't care 
Um, or their aunt Antiope. I mean, come on. But she it, yeah, all right. Uh, yeah, which was sad, but then it, she got over and she went into the job and it was great. Um, <laughs> but I think that this is the first time that I can remember at least getting to see like a girl test these powers out and loving it. Like the closest thing I can think is like Claire from Heroes when have testing you seen- her powers. Oh, yeah. Well, but yeah. even then it was yeah. like, okay, I'm not excited about this. Like I am a freak yeah. and I am yeah. not normal and yeah. look yeah. at the stuff that I can do. How many female hero origin stories have you seen? This is one this, of the reasons Wonder that Woman. Wonder Woman is so powerful and so mm. important. We've not gotten the opportunity. We've never seen this from a feminine perspective. Maybe sure. Buffy, maybe Sailor Moon, but again. Well, Buffy would come in late. Buffy's already That's the true. Slayer, yeah. unless it's you're true. watching the movie, in which case. And don't watch the movie. Made bad life choices. <laughs> <laughs> Ba- bad life choices. Why'd you do that? Yeah. How funky is your chicken? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm she leaves on the boat it. with Steve, <laughs> and we get the weird boat scene. The, uh, weird, the, the weird boat scene. Thank you for calling it that. As we know, it takes no time at all to get to London. So we, we just <laughs> right. have to compress they get, no, they the get entire t- no, no, four day voyage. No, they, they catch a ride on a tugboat, which makes it faster, but also, yeah, time is a it's construct. And overnight. We don't care. She slept it's for overnight. maybe eight yeah, hours. It's true. And oh, we're in London now. It's great. It's fine. Well, we it don't know where Themyscira is. Matter. The it's true. pretty positively in the Mediterranean. We also right? learned that apparently the uh, shield around is just an illusion. It's not right. actually a barrier that keeps no, anything okay. out. No, okay, I've been thinking about that. Say Zeus, do better. Do a well, better no, job. Here's the situation. No, and this My is I, okay, I went away on a week's vacation. <laughs> Damn it! There's a man on fire in Ramsey Park. No, here, okay, because no, I was no, thinking. No, 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 no. I need a clean edit off of that. We're not including. <laughs> but it's funny. Here's the deal with that, because I've been thinking about this because I saw the movie twice, and I also was just like, shitty shield, Zeus, you did a bad job. I think that whenever Diana crosses her bracers and uses that power against Antiope in that fight, whenever Hippolyta is looking down and says, what have I done? I think that the release of Diana's godlike power oh. has affected the shield mm, around the mascara, like which Zeus much. put there to protect his child from Ares, but now that she has come of age and now has power and is able to go fight Ares, the shield is losing its power. Because Hippolyta does talk about how Diana's power, if, if her power is sure. revealed, then they will become vulnerable. Yes, the that more that we train nicely. her, like the faster yeah. Ares will That's find good. her. And yeah. we do Correct, get, but I accept it. We do get the fog that encompasses mm-hmm. the Themyscira shield. Mm-hmm. And we right. also, I, I need to see it again because I'm not sure how this works. Awesome. Is the German boat, as we push into Themyscira, sinking? Because it looks as though the large boat oh. is the tilting boat right is over. I think, so it is. Yeah, it's tilted. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's sinking, but I think uh, for me, how I read it, because I watched Black Sails, is that they hit the sandbar. They hit the land. Oh, okay. Because they didn't okay, know the sure, land sure, was sure. coming. Well, I don't know. There's no sandbar around Themyscira because Diana's very confident when she dives off the cliff that she's got a good, th- there's a good gap of water there. That's true. Well, maybe, maybe it's like she the reef the around. Yeah. Okay, no, maybe it's maybe like the we're reef. concentrating on the wrong things. <laughs> it's like That's the, the reef subtitle around. for Excelsior. <laughs> Basically, yes. We spent 40 minutes last week trying to figure out where the hell Natasha went at the end of that movie. Um, um, That's not the wrong thing. That's, That's right. the right I'm thing. I'm sorry. So we're talking about the boat trip. We're talking why, about why does what the we're, boat ta- we're talking about work. the sex conversation. Why does this not work? Because it was written by someone who doesn't understand how people talk. This is my problem with the whole script. I felt like the whole yeah. script was like that. I can feel like, it. Like uh, particularly, I, and again, I give a lot of credit to Chris Pine for delivering things in such a way where I just kind of was able to kind of get past it because mm-hmm. you can give anything to to diana because she's an amazon and so she i mean yeah it, if she's a little socially awkward that's mm-hmm. fine she's from you know the mascara mascara their mascara damn it anyway <laughs> so like that i can give a complete pass but a lot a lot of this dialogue was vague and choppy and hard to follow and I can't tell if they're making a joke or if it's social commentary mm. or if it's supposed to be sincere. I want to like this scene. I really want to like it. And I can't understand what the hell they're doing. Do you remember the first time in your life you ever had a crush on somebody and had to try and have a conversation with that person? All Everybody who doesn't is this Is scene. this your assertion that this is what's mm. happening here? I mean, yes, I that can is see that. Yeah, when you, that have, when you have a crush, you are choppy because you're trying to think. You're saying the wrong things. Mm-hmm. You're like, I don't, that's not what you're like, man. You're doing uh, the, yeah, I mean, you know, if you just want to sleep, I don't understand why. Okay, so you'd have to marry me for, and the, I don't get why that. No, that whole thing reads to me entirely yeah. as encountering somebody who has, like, awed you in a way and who has like really caught your eye and caught your attention and you don't know how to act like a socially apt person <laughs> with that person huh. now and i think it's the huh. same thing with him i mean like when he sees her the first thing he goes is 
Wow. wow. Which yeah. I really liked. Those, I like that. Also, yeah, lovely. no, that's really that great. So yeah. I think that that's exactly what this is, is that they're both like, okay, well, we're going to go. We're going to do this thing. And now we're together on this boat. And how do we have a conversation? How do we, how do we, how does this happen? And she's never met yeah, a man yeah. in her entire life. So that alone would be like, I mean, I think that women intrinsically know that you cannot speak with a man the same way that you can speak with a woman, regardless of what kind of role that man has in your life. It's just different. We talked about that in Firefly, whenever Hanara was like, you can't be yourself around men. It's just the way that it is. And so I, I really do think that it's just like this. It's it, it feels awkward and it looks awkward and it comes off as awkward because these two are being fucking awkward. Maybe. I, I still don't like the content of the conversation. I think there's a way of doing that where there's a certain kind of that that testing of boundaries and that testing yeah. of interaction, I, I could be into that, but I'm not sure that that's what we get when we immediately go to talking about sex and we go to talking about marriage and it feels as though we're doing this, well, Paradise Island, sorry, Themyscira is utopian. It's this this idyllic paradise where everyone's super chill and super cool and everything is good and men are inessential for pleasure or whatever mm -hmm. line it is that Diana gets, mm -hmm. which is rather lovely, but we don't anchor that in anything that's actually happening to the two of them, except that we go straight to, well, you're a woman and I'm a man, so clearly sex, right? Yeah, I mean, it's right? only a matter of time. I'm hot and you're yeah. hot. Let's yeah. keep hot together. Right, yeah. Right, right. Um, yeah, I, I, I really hate that this was so sloppy. I think it could have been very charming. I wish we had leaned more into his, when they're dancing later, Mm -hmm. And he talks about, you know, uh, get a this, job, get married, this, have babies. Right. And mm -hmm. you can you can sense that longing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If we had a nod to that here, yes. That's yes. what we should have had. And and for yeah. her too, for this idea that something about you is different mm -hmm. from what I have from from right. what's my experience. Because if there had been like a mutual mystery and exploration. I would have appreciated that more than this awkward fumbling. The beat that we get when they're dancing, when he talks about you get married, you have babies, you grow old together. And she says, what's that like? Well, what I would like is you grow what, sorry? Oh. Uh, I'm sorry, what now? You grow old? That is not a thing that happens to me or my people. Well, I she guess. is, okay, but she has, she has grown. Like all the Amazons were made like, like cut whole cloth as like adult women. Sure. That's true. Diana was born yeah. and so was a child. And I mean like age, stops very, aging very at 18, 19, well, 20, Well, I would assume whatever. that they all age. They just age at a much slower rate. So when he says, we all age, she's like, oh yeah, we, you only live what? 10, 20,000 years? <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. And he's like, well. 80? <laughs> <laughs> On a good day? Woof. Oh, yeah. no wonder you wear a watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I keep track of that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I God, do, I've lost so much of my life. I do really like the line, have you ever never met a man before? What about your father? I have no father. I was brought to life by Zeus. Well, that's neat. Yeah. <laughs> that, that played I really like well. That. I will say, that actually, well, that's neat did get maybe the biggest laugh in the theater when we were watching <laughs> right. it. Right. And was, it's still like a glorified it's, it's chuckle, It's not a great though. line. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's yeah. just, that was and the I biggest And I do like line. that he's, the no part of this is he's just like, I just don't believe what you're saying to me. Yeah. He's just like, okay, right. I guess I got to buy that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is a little weird because later he's going to be super skeptical of the story of Aries. But he was just there. You were there. just there. There's a magical, a magical lasso. rope. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. There are some misses. Meanwhile, Diana arrives in London, meets Etta Candy, dresses to fit in, and shows Steve that she can handle her damn self. Is this your favorite part of the movie? No. Really? Yeah. Elizabeth? Uh, I don't know if it's my favorite part of the movie, but... I mean, don't get me wrong. I do love this part of the right. movie. Yeah. <laughs> but Diana shopping and Diana being in London spoke to me so much. Uh, when she's walking through the streets of London and her uh, cloak is opening just a little bit, yeah. like, no, 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 cover up, cover up. And she's like, oh, why? Cover what up? But Okay, I don't presume to speak on this subject with any kind of authority, but I was made really uncomfortable by that moment because that's not a joke, you guys. That's not something that you play for a laugh. The oh, way that I don't it was think played that... for a laugh in the movie. Oh, do you think it was played for a laugh? I felt that it was. Oh, no. Mm. I think that that was just like, hey, this is the reality. We don't. Yeah, Because you're not wearing clothes. Like, this yeah. was the intersection for me between Diana's femininity and like the cultural perception of femininity. Right. And this is the, the only time in its running time that the movie really speaks eloquently on this point. And it was so impactful for me. It's so powerful to think about, oh, hell no. All of this is a social construct. All of yeah. this is just consensus. No, absolutely. Yeah. yeah I, no, did, I, I did they not did feel that it was played yeah. for a joke. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I felt that it... Um... It's one of those things where it's like, oh, it's funny because it's true. Also a right. little painful. Yeah. yeah. No, I, yeah, I, I, I do think so. I think that um, I, I loved her response to it always, which was just, 
confusion and yeah. why does this matter at all? That's yeah. what she yeah. kept on going back to. Too, yeah. was like, why does this matter? Yeah. Why are you, mm-hmm. why, why though? Why are you? Um, and even he seemed to be kind of like something was clicking into place where mm-hmm. he was just realizing, um, I, I don't know, that it, that it didn't make sense but had to be yeah. fixed because that is the way that things are. I love that so many people introduce themselves to Diana and try to shake her hand and she never shakes nope. anybody's hand. It's lovely. Just never, just, she never does that. at no point that. does anyone explain this no social No one explains that to her. <laughs> They're just sticking their hand out and yeah. she's just like, okay. Uh, I really want that. I, miss I that. want That's that moment in Justice League where she meets someone for the first time, just extends her hand and then walks away. <laughs> <laughs> because that's the ritual that's that you the, do. That's the thing. And in a hundred years, <laughs> no one has explained this to her. Oh, oh man, that's fantastic. No, I this, missed that. That's great. This is where we get some of my favorite lines of the film. Like when she first shows up and says, it's hideous. And he goes, yeah, it's not for everybody. That's right? a great line. And then with Ed the Candy, I'm Steve's uh, secretary. What's a secretary? I go where he tells me to go. I do what he tells me to do. Where I come from, that's called slavery. I, oh, I like, like her. her. I like her. Yeah. <laughs> And then we get the moment where she sees the baby and goes, oh, a baby. A baby. And she okay. goes, no, nope, come on. We don't have time. Seriously, Besides, though, that one's not made, for, not made from clay. That one's not made from clay. Yeah. Uh, I love that she is delighted and runs for the baby. And She's that... never seen a baby before. Yes. Yeah. She's yeah. never seen yes. a baby I, I will admit that on, on one hand, I really like it. And on the other hand, I almost want to be like, yeah, women love babies and ice cream. We get it, guys. But I don't know that that's actually what they were trying. That just maybe me being used to the way that women are treated mm-hmm. in films yeah. and not necessarily what they were doing. And I think they actually did it right. And I'm just seeing yeah. things through lenses of the history yeah. of the thing. It is I hard. Think that's fair, yeah. Throughout this whole movie, it's hard to not do that. Yeah. Right. Because, and uh, for me specifically, because I. I I identify so much with things that are traditionally feminine, Mm -hmm. even if they're not always across the board feminine. So it's really hard for me to say, okay, is this something that is universally true? Is it just true for me? Mm -hmm. But for me personally, because I do delight in babies, it, and ice cream and whatever it is mm-hmm. like there's there's this sense of empowerment in that thing like like yeah. yes it's okay yeah, it's, yeah. and I, she's never seen a baby before yeah. I mean, that, that's mm-hmm. true in the history so that makes sense mm-hmm. it does absolutely well, and I think that, yeah i mean i think that diana is just unapologetic about the way that she feels and she's unapologetic she, about everything yes and the way that the way that she carries herself the yeah. way that she dresses the way that she acts the way that you know how she loves the things that she loves she will not apologize Wait. for any of these things no does Diana apologize in this movie? And if she doesn't, is she the first superpowered female character who has ever not apologized <laughs> for anything in a movie? I don't think she ever apologized. I mean, like I she fights imagine. with Steve several times and yeah. never is like, listen, I'm sorry, but I she just straight temper. up is like, yeah. you know, you're That's a liar and why would you not She do is this? completely unapologetic. Yeah. She is comp- uh, through the whole movie. She well, never, never doubts in a herself. Where she need- I mean, she apologizes to Antiope after the fight. She doesn't, but that's because she hurt Antiope and did not intend yeah, to Yeah, her. yeah. That's I, not a I social was just apology, thinking, that's right. an actual apology. That's apologizing yeah. to my aunt who I actually <laughs> just hurt. I was just thinking of when she was first training with Antiope and she says, you keep doubting yourself. Yeah. And Diana says, no, I don't. Mm-hmm. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Yeah. And I think that's, that's she really carries that through mm. for the rest of the movie. Yeah. She does not doubt herself. She yeah. doesn't doubt that's who she beautiful. is. And I love, God, I love Diana Prince shopping. Yeah. <laughs> it's I fantastic. love it. Um, and that she's thinking about how do I feel in these clothes? How can I How do can the anyone fight that... in these? Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, but she is also seeing she's looking in the mirror to see how she looks. That's also fine. Yes. Yeah. She's wondering, do these clothes feel good on me? <laughs> this That's is, it's also choking good. Me. Yeah. This is choking me. I don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. And when she picks something, she picks something that you can tell. Very practical. It's not only practical, but she feels great in it. Yes. Like she's like, yes, this is the thing. This this is what I want to present. I like it. This one, mm-hmm. please. Let's go check out. Yeah. No, I quite I like, like the line whenever she comes out, like in that final outfit and Steve is like, uh, you were supposed to make her less distracting. Like I enjoy that line. I think it's cute. I think that it's yeah. showing just how distracted he is by her yeah. and how attractive right. yeah. he finds her. Oh. And then Edda's like, oh yeah, you put a pair of specs on her and suddenly she's not the most beautiful woman right. you've ever seen. Like I loved all of that. I thought it was yeah. all great. I like even when she starts to take her cloak off to try something on yeah. right there in front of everybody. And Edda's like, oh, ooh, <laughs> 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 which is just delightful Edda's because fantastic. even she yeah. is just like, no, this woman's beautiful. Yeah, no, this. Yep. Uh-huh. And also, yeah. you can't do that here. You also, can't you do can't that do that here. here. Yep. So then we get a small break where we see Dr. Poison having a breakthrough, even though she doesn't have her notebook. Mm-hmm. So I guess the notebook thing was completely pointless to begin with. <laughs> and then we go back to I see. Mean, it's good for the good guy. You take it yeah. to the cryptographer. I, 
you that's know, true. Also that's known true. as Diana. And <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Diana, that cunning linguist. <laughs> it's not really my. No, joke. no, no! Shut up! I gotta <laughs> no. hang on. Go to my mind palace. <laughs> It's, okay, what, it, it's what they call the trope, yeah. <laughs> to be fair. Yep. Wait, what? <laughs> the the trope of someone knowing certain languages and being able to yes. uh, decipher uh, oh. for other people in the room is called the cunning linguist trope. It's it's an end joke for the trope as well. So yeah, it, it makes yeah. sense. So then Steve meets with the men planning the war, and Diana is enraged by their behavior. Oh man! One of my favorite things about this film is this theme over and over again of. Diana being very upset about people who won't do anything, who are mm -hmm. complacent and it. doing nothing. Mm -hmm. She yeah. has to do something. She sees a problem. It has to be fixed. She's going to fix it. Yeah. She can't do nothing. She's yeah. never yeah. done nothing. This is also a really it. nice tension between her experience on Themyscira and the modern world because we're seeing the abstraction of war. Now mm -hmm. you have the luxury, thanks to, you know, relatively speaking, modern communications technology of sending men to die on your behalf without yes. actually having to be there yeah. yes. yourself and refusing to take personal responsibility. That, I think, in particular speaks to me about Diana's character. Mm -hmm. you know? I like that a lot. I also like that she, in the space of that, um, whatever building they were in, which I guess was a political building of some sort. Sure, yeah. yeah. Yeah, where she's in the lobby or on the staircase just yelling, yelling. Yeah. while just everyone is yeah. walking past. Yelling, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is it's absolutely fantastic. against every social convention specifically for women. Yeah. And she just does not give a shit. Mm -hmm. She nope. is going to make herself heard. I love mm -hmm. it. Yeah. It felt very true to life mm -hmm. with Steve trying to shush her. Yeah. Yes. To, no, no, no. This isn't how you behave. This isn't how you behave. I mean, this mm -hmm. is the story of the oppression of women for millennia. Yeah. So true. Although we did see, I think, from his character, at least, this idea that yes you're right but yes you're right but yeah. yes you're right but yeah. which i i wonder that and alistair if that is something that speaks to you as men who watch this sort of oppression happen if if, if there's ever that time when you want to let something happen more naturally but you there's also like a sense of this is not how things are done or if that's <laughs> Does that make sense? I mean, I yeah. feel like that's got to be a part I of... I don't think that Vinton and I are particularly bound by social convention <laughs> no. in that regard. Which is so great. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. But I... Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I still feel like that even there was a part of that, that w when he was even in the... Uh, whatever the room they were in where, where David Thewlis was talking mm -hmm. and uh, where there is occasionally where his trying to keep her in the bounds of the cultural norm is also in a sense trying to protect her, yeah. which was very interesting. And trying to accomplish something approaching a greater good. He yeah, kind of absolutely. still believes in this. So he is, he knows that he knows he's lying. Yeah. Will, mm -hmm. You know, throw the baby out with the bathwater mm -hmm. and that would upset Diana presumably because <laughs> babies, babies, <laughs> <laughs> There's so nothing I wrong like, with liking babies. I like that he's genuinely trying to to do the right thing yeah. as far as he can see it. But it is obviously, yeah, I mean, super uncomfortable to watch and, and super familiar, I think, to us all. But then the turn that we get when he uses the lasso on himself, yeah. mm -hmm. I love that moment. That is great, particularly yeah. when he realizes, apparently without his conscious acknowledgement, how terrible this plan is. Yeah, it's it's, terrible. Terrible. Yeah. Dangerous. it's, probably it's die. such a great moment that when she's like, how do I know you're not lying to me now since you've already lied to me? And he just puts the last one. He's like, look, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, really show you. it's such a great moment. And then we get Steve introducing Diana to his team. Steve's Howling Commandos? Steve's Diana's Howling Commandos. Diana's Howling Commandos. Howling Commandos. Howling Commandos. This is very much with Diana's. <laughs> yeah, this felt very familiar to me. It this sure did. Felt very, very, very similar to some movies that we may or may not have discussed over the course of the last few episodes of Excelsior. Uh, do they work for you? I mean, the Howling Commandos, they are not, right? Yeah. No, no, absolutely no, not. They're not. They're not that we great. Do, yeah, there is no Dum Dum Dugan here, which is a travesty. <laughs> That's a travesty, because yeah. Dum Dum Dugan is obviously the best. Yes. Yes. This, this is a moment I'd like to take to talk about the team throughout the rest of the movie, because this team does present some interesting things. We get some diversity between them, mm -hmm. and we get some interesting stories of how the world has affected each one of them, yeah. and their culture, and and like their people, yes. more than just them sure. personally. Mm -hmm. yes. So we get a lot of that. We get the, uh, he wanted to be an actor, but this is a time of war. How can, how can that yeah. be? And he's, the wrong, he's the wrong color. And yeah. the wrong color. Yeah. And then you get, of course, the Native American talking about it. He's like, well, his people killed my people. Yes. And showing Diana like, oh, this world is much different than I thought mm -hmm. it was. What I really like about it is I think without Diana, these characters fall flat for me. These, these characters yes. would be more 2D to, to me. But her reactions make me care about them. Mm -hmm. Without that, they would be really 
disposable to me and her thoughts about them, the way that she sees them, the way that she interacts with them gives them value to me. Yes. I actually really I like love that. that. I love the whole sequence between uh, Diana and Sammy whenever he starts talking to her in French and she immediately responds in French and then is speaking in Mandarin and he's like, oh, I know Mandarin too. And then she's like, okay, but what about Hellenistic Greek? And he's just like, what? okay, who is this girl? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, are we done? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a really good line. And then, yeah, whenever she uh, throws that guy across the bar and Sammy's like, I am frightened and a little aroused. <laughs> yes, absolutely. That yeah. Be all our reactions. Sammy yes. speaking for the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy really works for me. Charlie I like Sammy a lot. doesn't. Charlie so does not much. work for me as much. Yeah. And Chief doesn't either, I have to say. I, because I get that we're making the reference that, that human beings are much more complicated, that, that mankind is much more violent, that there is a history of aggression and mm -hmm. of warfare that Diana isn't cognizant of at this point. She sees this as the continuation of, of Ares' original plan yeah. and doesn't know. She just doesn't know the world. But if you're going to invoke that, I feel as though you kind of need to do something with it. Yeah. And they don't. They don't. Yep. And so they don't have the time to hollow. maybe, but yeah, yeah. I yeah. agree. It, it, it was pretty hollow. And yeah. I'm not sure that there isn't something happening with Charlie that I kind of need to, because by the time we pivot to singing, it, there's some complexity to his character. I haven't yeah. unpicked it on my first viewing. Right. He may open up to me in subsequent viewings, but he hasn't yet. So mm -hmm. I'm not into him. Sammy, I think is, is, pretty much a comprehensive success though. yeah he's yeah. a great Sammy's character. really good yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. and i really like their motto that we get later let's get what we want get what we need and never get what we deserve yeah yes. <laughs> like so yes. yeah. yeah it works yeah. perfect mm -hmm. for that group deserving of course being mm -hmm. one of the major themes of the story <laughs> yes uh -huh. so then we see ludendorff and dr poison t testing their new gas and this scene bothered me a little bit. It's very mustache twirly, especially oh, when they throw the gas, the gas mask in, mask, and they're yeah. like, oh. "But they don't need the gas mask won't work." He's like, "They don't know that." Well, <laughs> I, I almost expect them to say something about that dang moose and squirrel. <laughs> Do all of these cutaways to Ludendorff and Doctor Poison work for you guys? It feels like we spend a lot of time with them. I, I don't think know that we advanced the plot as much as I would like. During this first watch, it worked for me okay because mm -hmm. I didn't know where they were going to go with those characters. Sure, sure. Right. Sure. After my first watch, these scenes are all irrelevant to me. Yes. And I'm never going to care about them again yeah. On, yeah. Any, on any future watch. Yeah. Sure. Fair. Yeah. Fair. I agree. Yeah, I think we completely missed with Maru. I think she could have been fantastic. Mm -hmm. I think we could have gone without Ludendorff at all. His only purpose was to be a decoy from who Ares really was, and he failed at that. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. 100%. So then the group goes through the trenches and Diana pushes through the battlefield, taking out all the opposition and saving a small town. I have to say, my first time watching the movie, the sequence of her crossing no man's land was probably my least favorite in the entire movie because it felt so forced and forceful. It felt as though this was a superhero moment in a movie and particularly in a specific context that doesn't justify a superhero moment. And I'm very confused about the geography of what's happening right now. Because as they're approaching the line, they're passing all of these refugees from the village, right? So we know that the village is in danger. But then we get to the allied line. Then there's no man's land. Then there's the German line. And then there's the village. Mm -hmm. And we're told specifically that these lines haven't moved in a year. So have these refugees just taken a really, really long time to travel like a mile? There's no urgency to rescuing the village mm -hmm. right now. It sure. is an injustice, but it's an injustice that happened at least a year ago. I, am I overthinking this? Am I getting caught no, up on, on geography again? That just didn't I bother me. I mean, yeah, in I fact, if anything, I think that that speaks to why Diana did see it as such a present reality because, again, it was, you mean for a year you've done nothing? For a year mm -hmm. no one has uh, dared to yeah. cross this terrain? Yeah. For a year wow. these people have been displaced? This place has been you know, completely taken from them, women and children she keeps going back to? So for me, that didn't, that didn't bother me, I think. Mm-hmm. This is my favorite scene it. in the movie. <laughs> I don't know if this is my favorite scene in the movie. However, on first watch, this was the most emotionally impactful scene for yes, me. Yes, yes. I am having trouble completely unpicking why, though. Yeah, it's really, really interesting because it's it, it, this absolutely was a scene that like I was weeping through basically me too. the whole like, thing. I, I, I wept through this whole scene. Yes, 
And I, I'm not, I'm, I'm just like you, Elizabeth, like, I'm not sure why, like, there are, there are bits of, like, the emotions and the feelings and the reactions that I'm having that I'm like, okay, I understand why I am feeling these things, uh-huh. but I don't understand the full, like, complexity of what is going on, yes. like, in my own heart watching yes. this scene. I, there has to be something about, I mean, there's just things that I, I am reacting to that I don't understand fully and that right. I'm not aware is something that has been affecting me my entire life and yeah. then to see... Diana stepping against that and working against that really affecting me. And I'm not, I don't know, I I cannot articulate it, which I feel like I'm doing our audience a serious disservice by just being like, no, this is a really emotionally impactful scene. Well, why? I don't know. I just know that it is. And for me, this was the moment in the movie, watching the movie, where I thought, okay, this is why there are woman-only showings at this movie. Yeah. And I want to be in one right now, but I'm not. I, I was there with my daughter and with her best friend. Um, and so there was something, con- there, there was some connecting thread to us because of that mm-hmm. alone. But I mean, on first watch, I had a lot of personal feelings and personal emotions and felt personally embodied by this character crossing the line. And I think if, if there, if you watch this movie and didn't think about just the hardest thing you've ever done. Yeah go back and watch the scene again and think about the hardest thing you've ever done because yeah. it can be very personally moving and empowering. But I think the thing that you're speaking to, I hope, mm-hmm. um, and for me too, I, I think and hope that that what it is that I can't quite articulate as well and wrap my mind around as well is it, the, these feelings that seem deeper than my own personal experience yes. is this collective feminine experience of taking the hits of yeah. taking the hits and mm-hmm. never getting the glory that she is given in this scene mm-hmm. never getting the the super heroic glory and glamour of taking the hits so that the people behind you can push past the line mm-hmm. because i think women have been doing that for centuries yeah and no one has acknowledged it or seen it as heroic in the way that they see Steve going up in the plane and exploding as heroic. Mm -hmm. And that I think has been true to every woman's experience for ever, ever, for basically ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Elizabeth, you said that you felt embodied by Wonder Woman in this scene. And I guess I kind of wanted to ask you both, has that happened to you before watching, you know, the modern era of superhero movies? Do you feel embodied by Nat or by Wanda or by these other female heroes? Or is this different? This is different, and I'm not certain why. I know that, like, whenever I whenever I watch like Natasha Romanoff on screen, like kicking ass and taking names and being totally amazing, what I feel is like I'm proud of her for doing that thing. Right, and good I'm for like, her, yeah, not for me. There's this weird yes, like, yep. way to go, you did the thing. Yeah, like I'm super proud of you. You did it. Like that's awesome. You can keep up with the boys. Right. That's great. And I wonder. I wonder now having said those words in that order out loud, if that's the thing you can keep up with the boys and I'm super proud of you. And like, yay women, we're just as good as them. But with this, with Steve turning to Diana and being like, you know, this isn't what we're here to do. We can't stop this. We can't save everybody. Her response being like, maybe this isn't what you're here to do, but it's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. And like her turning around, pulling her hair down, putting on her headpiece and then just going. And everyone else is like, no, 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 no. Don't, what are you doing? What are you doing? And she would have done it whether anyone had followed her or not. Yeah, absolutely. She had no idea. She had. She was so far across that line yeah. before any of the men got up to start like going with her. But it wasn't just you're keeping up with the boys. It's mm-hmm. you are stepping up and doing the thing that needs to be done. Yeah. Doing the right thing for the people of this village. For, for the people. For right. the people. That was not huge for, for you. Me too. This isn't look at me. I'm Diana. I need to prove myself. Right. It was right. never about right. proving okay. yourself. Never yeah. about keeping up. It's this is the thing that is right and true and just and yeah. ought to be done. And she gets up and she does it. Well, and even that I would say it wasn't so much about the principle of what is right as it was a very specific personal compassion. We had just seen her pass the wounded soldiers on the bridge. We mm-hmm. had seen her pass the mother the and the child in the trench that were stuck mm-hmm. in the mud. We had seen her pass um, the, the the man who had lost leg. his leg. Yeah. And then the, the, the mother and the child in the trench. She had gone so far passing these people. And of course we have that line echoing in, in the back of our heads. Steve Trevor had said, my father had always said, if you see something going wrong, you can either do nothing or you can do something. And I've tried doing nothing. Mm-hmm. So, Which is a really good line, and I really like that from him. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and the other thing is that whenever she passes his mother and child, like uh, they're speaking, I think it's French. 
Uh, it would be French. This uh, yes. Is Belgium. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So uh, they're speaking French. No one else is paying attention to this woman. No right. one else. I mean, like they're, they're in a trench. They're in a war. There's a lot going on. No one else is paying attention. But Diana hears her. They may not understand what this woman is saying. Diana hears her, understands her, and knows that she needs to do something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she and, understands her and then understands her. And then understands her. her. Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I think that there's, yeah, there's really just a lot happening here that I, I still cannot completely and fully articulate. But it means... Watching Diana step up and be the hero is so much more impactful to me than watching Black Widow also be a hero or watching Wanda get better control of her power and learning to be a hero. Is there a degree to which Wanda and Black Widow and even characters like Peggy Carter, who I would say is probably the closest Marvel analog to, Mm -hmm. to Diana, is there a sense in which they are, even when they're empowered, generally within the MCU pursuing an agenda that has been set by one of the men? that they are fulfilling a function right. rather than taking the lead and, and really kind of for, acting out of principle. Certainly for Wanda and probably also certainly for Nat as well. Um, and, I mean, like in Captain America, the first Avenger, certainly that is the same for Peggy because like her general, like her commanding officer is a man. Yeah. Um, I would be interested to think about that, like going through and like watching her series again mm-hmm. and seeing if that's still the case. But yeah, I do think that that's part of the thing is that it's, you know, not only are you keeping up with the boys, but you're doing what the boys told you to do. Mm-hmm. And right. here, or Di- you're coming alongside. You're right, partnering right, right. with yeah, a yeah, bigger well, agenda. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Elizabeth, We've name-checked all of the big MCU female characters Mm. at this point. Do you feel more embodied by Diana in this scene in particular and in terms of your femininity in particular than you do by those MCU characters? Yes, yes, without a doubt. Um, I've never resonated strongly with um, either Nat or Wanda. Um, uh, Peggy Carter, obviously, I Mm. have very much so. But even she is very different from me on so many levels. I look up to her a lot and I respect her as a woman very much, but she doesn't... Um, she doesn't seem like me right. in a very just simple, um, yeah, in the simplest terms. She's not like me. We don't think the same. We don't have the same goals, mm-hmm. I think. Um, and that is something that resonated with me more with Diana is she seemed to embody something. I, I, I Just this idea of hu- basic human compassion Mm -hmm. and lending strength where strength is needed yeah in a way that um that peggy while peggy knows her value and that's fantastic and she is doing the work and getting the job done um it is less about that human compassion Mm -hmm. and it's more about um about the work, which I yeah. respect very much, sure, no, absolutely. but doesn't speak to me personally sure, sure. Mm-hmm. in the way that Diana does. Yeah, I, I really think that you hit the nail on the head. Like thinking about like Nat and Wanda and Peggy, absolutely, these are women that like I look up to and that I mm-hmm. admire. But I, I could never be like them. Mm-hmm. I could be like Diana in that when you make the choice to be compassionate and care about people, and when you choose to love. I can do those things. When you plant yourself like a tree by the river of truth. Yes. <laughs> Say no. Matter. You move. You move. <laughs> yes. I know I'm hitting this embodiment idea uh-huh. pretty hard, but I think this is really important. Vinton, you and I were talking a little before we started recording the podcast about this kind of representation and about the fact that we don't have to look to Wonder Woman for yeah. representation and for mm-hmm. embodiment because we're straight white dudes. And every movie in the history of movies yeah. is produced to embody us and <laughs> mm-hmm. to represent us and to give us a variety of characters with whom we can identify. I think this notion of embodiment and representation is really super important mm-hmm. and should never, ever be diminished. Yeah. I will say I think the Marvel Universe still wins because we have Earth 405 where I have my female cap right there. <laughs> That's true. That is true, yes. Well, and even now I'm thinking how much this, like, like Wonder Woman and Diana... Uh, that I mean that that would be something that I would love to cosplay and wouldn't take as much thought mm-hmm. as cosplaying sure, sure. Cap does. Yeah. Because again, I have to kind of step away from my own like the way that I approach the world. Sure. And think about what's this that I respect about Cap and the way that he approaches the world. Mm-hmm. And while those two characters are very similar, I think that that Cap stands for the principle of the damn thing mm-hmm. and uh, and and doing this for everyone. Whereas Diana speaks to like this one person at a time, one yeah. thing yeah. at a time, one village at a time. sure that I completely agree with this. Cap does act out of principle, but he's also very focused on the individual. I mean, most of our story that we get in the Cap trilogy is focused on Bucky, and Bucky being the exception. Yeah, I suppose that's true. So yeah. he's more than willing to to embody the principle in the individual, but not necessarily to to hold to the abstract. That's true, but isn't it seen as 
almost a weakness in Cap because of that. Doesn't that by other characters push in the movie? Certainly, but I feel as though yes. Cap would argue differently, and I think we, the audience, are inclined to those of us who are Team Cap anyway. Uh, right, exactly. <laughs> that, is, that is true. I suppose. Yeah, everyone at this table. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the right table. <laughs> So then they learn about the gala where Ludendorff will be. Uh, Actually, before we jump to that, I I do want to talk about the town, about her capture of the town. Are we skipping yes. that? Yeah, yeah. No, the oh. capture of the town, I thought, worked comprehensively. I, I loved that sequence. Once we're mm -hmm. off the battlefield, which right. is where she felt a little odd to me, though. I really and overpowered, moved. you said. Overpowered to you. Was that the problem? Yeah, a little bit. I, only because we hadn't really established it. I mean, she is a god. Well, well we and learned... it only works thematically that's yeah. the only way yeah. it works you have to just let it go because of the theme i mean the fact that all of the firepower is directed at her and six guys can just yeah. come in behind her and nobody takes a hit it's only thematic and for me yeah. that's fine i'll take it yeah. i'll let that resonate with me sure well i mean how many movies have we seen where you've got eight bad guys shooting at one dude and every yeah. one of them are missing sure. well, repeatedly the truth is if yeah. we had recreated the scene with camp holding the shield holding yeah. his shield yes i still would have had a problem with it in that regard it feels somewhat implausible and i just feel as though the script is letting down the action here a little bit i need a little better tighter motivation for this whole thing to work mm -hmm. if the german forces had just been about to occupy the town of Velt or had just had just occupied it and had driven the people out if we hadn't crossed no man's land basically is what it comes down to uh -huh. if we hadn't crossed the front in order to do this thing i would have been on board completely because once we get to the town i love it i love this set piece i love the action yeah. and when we finally get to the bell tower that is one of yeah. the most impactful moments in the entire movie. Yes. I love the callback to the shield trade mm -hmm. from it's the battle on the beach. Mm -hmm. The whole thing just works beautifully. I also like that there's no need to show that that sniper died because that sniper definitely died. Yeah, Defo <laughs> died. Bell died. Just collapsed uh, on, just having a bad yeah, day. Yeah, we get just a really ex. I mean, like this was this uh, was done for me specifically, but the scene where uh, Diana bursts through the window and it's takes fantastic. out like those half a dozen dudes yep. and is yep. skidding Beautiful. across the floor and bashing dudes with her shoe. I mean, like and it was just joyous. so good. And like, yeah, having herself. a good damn time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was uh, beautiful. I do find it really interesting that Wonder Woman, being a, a god, being an Amazon, uh, that here you have a character who can kill, doesn't like to kill, she doesn't take joy in killing, but mm -hmm. she's not afraid to kill. And I think that's right. been something about her in the comic books as well. Yeah. Is she's the one of them that is like, oh no, we can kill if we need to. Yeah, yeah. Batman's like, don't kill. Superman's like, I'm not going to kill. And Wonder Woman's like, sometimes we got to. I yeah. Don't yeah. take joy in it, but. I'm a warrior. Yeah, there's a yeah. panel from a Wonder Woman. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. There's a panel from a Wonder Woman comic where uh, she's talking to. I'm I'm not sure who she's speaking with, but she says, "You know how like Batman and Superman have like their big huge list of arch nemeses? I don't have that yeah. because I do what needs to be done." Interesting. And yeah. it's like that's a that's a damn good point, man. <laughs> you know, if when you just, put it like that, if you just killed the Joker, <laughs> Gotham would be fine. <laughs> I had just recovered like emotionally from the crossing of the front. And I do think there's something important about the crossing of the front and the fact that no one had been able to do it until she had done it. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay. L narratively, I can see where there are problems and it doesn't work, but I'm, I'm okay with that. I'll let all this go. No, it works for me. I'll let all this I was um, way too focused like Liz on, the, on her crossing. I was like, this is great. I love yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just uh, and the bawling. music. Oh God. Um, but yeah, I had just kind of recovered emotionally when she charged that bell tower. Um, I loved, I, I loved her howling commandos and Steve having at that point absolutely recognized what she is capable of. Yes. Oh, yeah. That was really fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that he gets the idea of this is how we can assist her to yes. get the job done where yes. we always see the opposite. We right. always see the opposite. It's always the girl who throws the guy the gun. You know, it's just, that's it's always, always Nat picking up Steve's shield and tossing it back yeah. to it. Right. Yeah. Always, mm -hmm. always mm -hmm. time after time. So already this is big. And then for me personally, the fact that it's a church steeple, that it's a bell tower mm -hmm. that she crashes into with some dude up there picking everybody off from the top of this church steeple, and she just obliterates that, but leaves the sanctuary and leaves the stained glass window. Well, I was messed up again. I was sobbing again. more <laughs> than obliterates it. She almost replaces it, because my favorite moment she in that does. sequence then is when she's she steps standing out there. and is in her way representative of everything that the steeple itself represented yes and wow really really powerful moment. it was yeah. huge it, and that one i on rewatch i lost that emotional impact of her crossing the front but that the bell tower scene resonated at least as deeply and maybe even more so when i had more time to commit to the thoughtfulness mm -hmm. of it and wasn't yeah. still reeling from the front yeah 
So then they do, they learn about the gala and then Steve and Diana dance. Gala, 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 gala. Is there a bad gala. way to say this? Are they all right? No, let's, let's just accept all pronunciations of that. <laughs> one. Okay. Moving on then. Gala. 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 <laughs> Steve and Diana dance or sway. They sway, they sway. They sway then they in the share snow. kiss and probably more. No, they definitely do it. <laughs> definitely more. Well, we can't say that. They fade to black. We, we just, Which is my, okay, more. like, all right, here's just a personal preference. That is, like, in films that are not specifically about, like, romance and sex and things like that, this is my preferred way to be like, oh, and then they totally did it. It's just the fade <laughs> just to black is the door out. Yeah, like, did I don't want to. pull out? I'm sorry. Huh? Um, <laughs> yes, <they did. laughs> fade to black, then pull out. Sex. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, this scene was really lovely all around. Yeah. This is one of my yeah. favorite parts. It's, it's where we get the dialogue that we already mentioned before. What do people do when there isn't a word? They get a job, get married, have children. What's that like? I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Yep. Really beautiful. Then the team heads to the gala. Steve in disguise talks to Dr. Poison and prevents Diana from killing Ludendorff. <laughs> she just marches right in, ready to go. That I love it. Blue it's so great. dress, though. <laughs> that blue dress, though. It's fantastic. You guys like the blue dress? <laughs> you didn't like the blue dress? Do you not like the blue dress? It's not great. No, I didn't Ooh, love the blue really? dress. I liked it. No. I liked that it kind of was um, like it hinted towards the Amazons because of the Yeah, the, it's, the I felt it. like it was very Hellenistic. It was, which is neat. However, it made it seem so out of place at the gala. Well, okay, I and like I thought that, that too, but then the second time I was watching it, the other ladies are also wearing, like, I mean, relatively flowy dresses. They're, like, some lower cut. Sure. Like, around, I mean, I, I don't, it worked for me. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Well, we're a little bit pre-deco here. I mean, that it doesn't not fit. No, it, it, it's fine, is I guess all I'm saying, is that it was it was fine, I but it guess I didn't see your point. thrill me. It was a good dress. It maybe wasn't a great dress. It wasn't a dre great wasn't dress. A I would have loved dress, to have a great sure. dress. I was Personally, too distracted by the sword in the back. I was like, The sword oh, was really oh, fucking yeah. cool, yeah. right? Awesome. Right between the shoulder blades. <laughs> yes. What sucked, though, is, again, costuming problems is that when she was like in the argument with Steve later, it was kind of like flopping around and like yeah, off to the side. Mm -hmm. nah, I wish that they would have just secured that a little better because right between the shoulder blades was so strong mm -hmm. and awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do we think of the scene between Steve and Dr. Poison? I quite like that. We actually. like his seduction. His... It was a little heavy handed, but he was in a hurry. Yeah. Was... <laughs> <laughs> He's got work to do. Yeah. I'm on yep. the clock and you need to be seduced already. What like, are you doing? let's do this thing. Yeah. 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 I thought it was good. Yeah, I, I really, I, I really liked when uh, Diana enters the room and his eyes glance up and she's like, "I see you're distracted. Goodbye." Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, an interesting moment that, in an alternate version of the film, wouldn't happen. Would be very suggestive of the truth of Maru. That that. Oh, that Maru is Aries. That's a major nod toward the idea that Maru may be Aries. I think. Oh yeah. God, because so of the way that, that she responds so when Diana comes in, and then we get. Well, that's why I knew David Thewlis was Aries because the way that he responded when he saw Diana. Really? Yeah. Yeah. From that moment where she first walked in and he stopped talking was like, uh, armistice. I was like, uh, oh, he recognizes her. This is over. Oh, interesting. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. I just assumed that was everyone's collective experience. No, nope. no I had no idea. That he, no, I had no idea he was later. Aries until uh, he showed up in yeah. the tower. And I, I was like, what the fuck is that? I didn't Lupin? know it was going to be him. I knew it wasn't going to be Ludendorff, but. Yeah. <laughs> oh, See, I just this makes me that hate the scene that he has with Diana at the gala because all but name dropping the God of War. Yeah, ba Just yeah. Hitting mm -hmm. this as hard as it can possibly be hit, which yes. I like. Yes. If he has a personal connection with sure, the God of War, sure. right? But, but I he hate doesn't. as yeah. a piece of script construction. Yeah, There's no need it's for yeah, it 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 definitely doesn't hold up on your second viewing either because you're like, this is nothing. <laughs> yeah. This is pointless. Yeah, this is, the gala scene totally lets me down. At yeah, no, all. this is a lot, a lot of scaffolding yeah. for yeah. something that is not going to pay. It's it's yeah. it's. It is unfortunate. It is a weakness. It is the one weakness I will concede to in this film. <laughs> <laughs> but the oh. Persian flaw. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, I, I feel like it double hits me hard because I am, I'm here for the gala, man. Show me all the dresses. Show me the, you know, I was so ready. And it was, it was kind of a throwaway scene. Yeah, mm -hmm. unfortunately. You also I want to know what kind of dancing the Amazons do. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Man. Some intense swing dancing or but something. Like square <laughs> dancing. Just, just oh a lot God. of oh, no. You're the worst. <laughs> you do, you do with that, uh, that classic trope of the guard who, who just there's no reason that they should have been let in it's like oh right. you don't have your idea oh i feel bad i'll let you in it's not like I i'm a crazy like strong that. soldier because i was expecting some <laughs> version of that too but i like 
the urgency that we bring into it. Yeah. And crucially, it isn't just Steve and Sammy showing up at the gate. There is a row of cars behind that them. Is that is true. Yeah. Yeah. And he knows and that every talking. one of those cars yeah. is actually Several full of a yeah. legit yeah. general yeah. That, yeah. that is going to be very upset yeah. about mm-hmm. all of this. Mm-hmm. So I like Sammy taking the initiative. I like the way that he's playing off the expectations of his own character. And, yes. and the almost assumed weakness and, and mm-hmm. fallibility of his own character. So I like that quite yeah. a lot. I, I like the like little Steve moment Steve where uh, Steve adjusts the pipe because it's a little cockeyed. <laughs> it's like, oh damn, come on, kid. Really, that <laughs> didn't cute. work for me because I'm like, you're a spy. You've been telling us this whole time that like you're a really good spy. Do you don't know, yeah. like, you don't know how to put a pipe in your mouth. <laughs> come on, fair. But then we do move to the scene where Diana sees the devastation of the gas being used on the small town. Oh, jeez, yeah. really tough. This, this scene really worked for yeah. me. It worked Beautiful. for me too. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I also really appreciated the tenderness of uh, Steve when he first sees her trying to touch her face. He's mostly concerned about her. She's yeah. all concerned about this village, which shows the the difference in those two characters quite mm-hmm. a lot too, it I think. It does, but I love how they anchor that in his understanding, uh, understanding of her and respect for her. Because yes. when she is going on this tirade that you did this, I could have stopped this and you stopped me and this is your fault. Mm. He immediately turns his attention back to the mission. Yes. He doesn't care about their personal relationship mm-hmm. at all. All he's yeah. focused on what she wants and what she can do, mm. and that was enormously powerful. Yeah, Even just telling her to go, not hang on, I've got to grab a motorcycle, right? Just go or wait for me, I'll yes. come with you, right? Yeah, right. You're right, very respectful. Yeah, well, and it's a really cool scene too because it gives us, um, uh, just a little bit, it, it is starting to show us that Diana is more than we think that she is because I mean, she just walks right into the gas, is completely unaffected. Yes. Yeah. Steve is on the outside of it, barely breathing it in, and yeah. it's already like about to yarts right there in the grass. Yeah. And yeah, no, it really is just. I love the way, I love the cinematography of her in the town with all of this smoke behind her. And this is one of the few times where we, like the color is all desaturated. Yeah. Yeah. And she's just like surrounded by death, surrounded yeah. by this damage that Ludendorff has done. And it's just. You it's, really see her acting chops here. Yeah. Yes. She's very, very good. Mm-hmm. Very she's good. very good. Like you can see mm-hmm. the pain and the devastation on her face. And it is just. It's be- it's it's a beautiful thing to behold, and that she's encountered death in battle. She's yeah. seen people die, and that's sure. one thing. But she's but never this seen is... this kind of wholesale slaughter, this impersonal slaughter. Right. Yes, yes, this right. Yeah, yeah, that meant a lot to her. She she talked about that talking about Charlie when he was mm-hmm. a sniper. Yeah. that there's something important Absolutely. about like you know the yeah. Whites how do you know that you're who you're killing if you can't see them? Yeah. yeah, and uh, yeah, whenever she talks about this, you know, and and she keeps saying like they killed children, like because I was right. paying attention the second time. She doesn't say. I think she says women a couple of times, but definitely she's like they're killing children because killing women that's not i mean she's an amazon yeah like, i noticed that's not that a thing. too steve is the one who stresses women, women. and children, women and children yes. she is the one who generally stresses children, children. yeah i like that very much yes mm-hmm. i think mm-hmm. it's a really just a, yeah. a very smart I bit of wonder work there. to what degree even in her adulthood she feels like the child. She feels she she identifies with the child because sure. she was the only one. She was one. the only one. She yeah. was the only yeah. kid. And she's certainly the youngest of all of the Amazons on that yeah. island. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, she's always going to be little Princess Diana. Exactly. Uh-huh. Yeah. So then Diana fights and kills an enhanced Ludendorff, but realizes he was not Ares as the soldiers continue to load gas bombs into a plane. And and I've already said it our, I've already said it in the podcast, but the reveal that Ludendorff is not Ares, even though I already saw it coming, really made me realize in that moment that I'm not going to care about his character or any of his scenes yeah. in any future rewatch yeah. of this film at all. Yeah. He's nobody. The chemical in Hells isn't even explained. No. And he's just a super flat, mustache twirly villain who yeah. turns out to have no purpose. Mm-hmm. I want to believe, and I've literally just been thinking about this over the course of the last 20 minutes as we've been discussing it. I want to believe that the dramatic irony at the heart of this movie is intentional. And that we, the audience, are supposed to understand that this is not Ares and that killing Ares is not going to accomplish anything anyway. Mm. Oh, that's interesting. But I can't Except quite commit to it. it does towards the end, though. Well, it kind of does, but even then it's a little ambiguous because, hey, let's definitely not mention the Second World War in this yeah. movie. Yeah, and right. the, yeah, yeah, the <laughs> many subsequent wars that again. still guess, happen. In our defense, we don't know for sure that those wars happened in the DCU. <laughs> it's entirely possible that the DCU replaced war with supervillainy. For the rest of the sure, 20th century. Sure, Okay. 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 Yeah, no, I'll buy that. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Yeah. Diana actually did end all war. That was amazing. <laughs> wow. wow. She did it. Um, when she kills Ludendorff and then looks over and still sees that they're loading the bombs and she cannot comprehend why this did not solve the problem. It hurts my heart so yeah. very much. It's she believed yeah. so entirely that she was like that she was going she was going to stop this. She was going to save everyone. She was going to stop anybody 
uh, stop all of mankind from fighting and hurting and mankind was going to be good and truthful and and like love one another again and then for that to be taken away from her is it I, it really affected me both yeah. times i saw it yeah i feel like this is one of the places where the movie fumbled for me actually because i i felt like this this whole conversation be between her and steve was a little uh, they, they kind of vagued it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I didn't ever quite, I feel like he never quite landed his point. Again, I liked his delivery very much. I actually really like Chris Pine in the role. Um, and I like her very much. She, she was obviously devastated, but again, it, it doesn't land because when she finally does defeat Ares, everybody takes off their gas masks and are so joyful and boyish and young again. But yes, we know that obviously this can't be the end of all no, violence yeah. because, you know, we're going to cut to the end of where she has to come and assist Batman and Superman. So obviously, yeah. yes, it is about the fallibility of man. It just, I, I just feel like they did not stick this one. Well, even I, Aries just says, I just suggested to them that yeah, they, they do this do on their own. And right, I, think that's, right. I think that's what they're saying. But it does throw you off when you get to that scene and everyone's taking their gas mask off. And it's like yeah. the German soldiers have been trying to like poison everyone. They're like, high fives, everyone. Right? Hugs. Yeah. Let's yeah. Have and you get that very sweet hug between the German kid and Chief, which yeah. was lovely. Well, and I wonder if part of that but... too is not just that, like, okay, Ares is dead and now, like, this war is over. But I mean, like, they did just witness two gods fighting, and they, and they all managed to survive that. Plus, we're leaning real hard on the Christ imagery, yes. right? At the, yeah. the very yeah. climax of yeah. the movie, even as she's standing framed by the sunset. There's something, I, I need to look at that frame again and, and pay more close attention to it, but there's something really Last Supper about the way that she's in the center frame with the sunrise coming up behind her and the way that the mm. figures are like arrayed around her almost in this tableau. Oh, interesting. It feels like kind of that kind of, of religious sure. iconography. For me, the moment of revelation works beautifully. As Diana looks down and sees the unfolding machinery of, of war and realizes that she hasn't saved the day, that, that mankind is not immediately going to revert to its pure right. natural state, that moment works well for me, though I do agree with you, Elizabeth, that the conversation doesn't quite connect, just feels a little stilted. But the power of that revelation is such that I don't really care that much. I'm, I'm so invested in her emotional response right yeah. now that it, it does work for me, yeah. I wonder if it would have had it not been for that turn where when she does defeat Ares, everybody like everything is happy and light again, because I, I, think, I obviously, yeah. you know, I do a podcast about black sales. Like I love this idea of just the fallibility of man and that we're trying hard, but we're messing it up on every turn. And I love when Steve says, maybe it's my fault. I really love that. Mm -hmm. That's really beautiful. Yeah. Um, but we didn't, we didn't yeah. stick with that. Because he crucially doesn't for me. differentiate between the Germans and himself. Mm -hmm. He's not saying, well, these are bad guys. They did this. He's oh, saying, no, it's all of us. That is Everyone true. has yeah. contributed mm -hmm. to this. Mm -hmm. And that's interesting. I like there was almost a note of, I don't even know how I would get this from the performance, but it felt as though there was almost a note of homesickness in Diana at that moment as she looks down and realizes, oh, it doesn't matter. The utopia that I come from, that is singular. It is unique. Oh, interesting. We have remained uh -huh. untouched by Ares and mankind hasn't, but if we can kill Ares, then, then mankind will revert to its natural innocence. And that's not happening. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just love the, the intensity and the complexity of it. Gal Gadot's pretty good, you guys. She's real good. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. she's real good. For sure. No casting problems in this movie. <laughs> so then Diana does find Ares. And he turns out to be Lupin. <laughs> it was Lupin and the I really whole time. do like the scene. Where... He was a werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> I do like the scene where he, he's like in the reflection and then he disappears. Yeah. The it's cinematography really well there done. is very cool. I really no, like I'm really it. into Stunning. it. I don't understand. I don't know what the symbolism is supposed to be that he is on the other side of the window from her, no matter what. But I know that it's there. I know that it's important. I just am not smart enough to figure out specifically what it is. I was thinking about it. I don't think it's symbolism in the the textual sense. I don't think it's a metaphor. I think what it is, is is direction. I think that this is so beautifully composed because Patty mm -hmm. Jenkins wants that interposition between the two of them, mm -hmm. that they are always yeah. disconnected. Mm -hmm. And they're disconnected by the shield around the mascara. They're, they're disconnected by oh, the understanding of the modern world. Sure, sure. They just They aren't, for the first time in the movie, talking the same language. Mm -hmm. And I like that very, very much. Yeah. And yeah, then, that. well, then we kind of slip into 
Stalk superhero ending number 45. But we don't have the giant beam. That's nice. That's uh, We kind of do with the oh, wait, lightning yeah, stuff. No, yeah. okay, but no, it's there. No, no, it's there. No, no, no. Those are lightning powers. I'm talking about the giant sky beam. The sky beam. I yeah. mean, the lightning oh. kind of replaces it pretty well for me. I, I definitely yeah. got the feeling yeah. of it. And I went, oh, the this is down. where Snyder right, is in the film. Okay, but we don't have the Chitari. We don't fair, have... Fair. There's no giant sky portal. Yes, <laughs> yeah, time, yeah. Yes. Um, but so, yeah, so... She finds out that she's the god killer, not the sword, and mm-hmm. she won't join Ares no matter how much he pleads. Um, and you get this big fight, which to me feels a little video gamey. Yeah. It yeah. bothered me a little video bit. I don't, game. It, it seemed like the video game end scene. And I was just like, I don't know what's the happening worst recently. part is the explosion where Ares rises again and, and clothes himself in armor and manifests swords. And it is like every single final fantasy villain. Yep. You defeat their first yeah. form, they superpower and come yep. back at you again. <laughs> yeah. Although I did like the effect where he put on the molten lava mask and then carved out the eyes <laughs> where you could see. Yeah, well, was that, cool. was that was neat. Cool. This was is cool. the point at which the mustache started to bother me. I've uh, got to tell you. I liked it. I liked it. I, I don't. I don't. Everyone else is gonna complain about it. I loved it when they zoom back in history and show I'm still there with the mustache. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, nice also, choice. Also, like I have it. a serious question. Do you think that Dave Thewlis had to bulk up just for that one little shot, just for like three <laughs> seconds of look? I have CGI'd him, right? CGI'd the hell yeah. out of him. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I like that. Sure. He was like, "Can I keep that as a p- portrait?" Yeah. I like that. Let's show it. Put it on my Tinder You're profile. You're gonna IMDb. Right? Yeah. Look at David Bowie. <laughs> it's that <laughs> shot. <laughs> <laughs> very good uh we do get the the pause in the fight as steve gives diana his watch says something and takes off in the gas bomb plane blowing it up in the sky sacrificing himself i like this very much yeah yeah i like the fact that the audio is muted mm-hmm. i like that she clearly doesn't understand right i like that we play fair completely with the audience mm-hmm. and i like that we get the dialogue when it is necessary mm-hmm. because this is the alternative to him being on the radio in the plane you guys this is this is oh, this yeah. is the radio speech. yeah is memory yeah. instead no, it's, it's memory instead of radio mm-hmm. far superior so he, i uh, like it here's my question for that though knowing that we get the dialogue later do you think that is what he said or just what she believes <laughs> he said oh you you no, no you, listen it's, you it, it continues the theme the, Diana, one of the last themes, night was really great i have a lot of diseases I just think you should know this. I'm a spy. Get early I'm session. not even you saying he, said, he might have said something very close to that. But the theme of the film, one of the big themes is what matters is what you believe. And she I'm believes no, that dead. love will fix I'm everything. Love will end okay. the war. Love will fix the war. So what he's war. saying is, Diana. Love will save the day. Here's my watch. Could you hold this for me? I'll be right back. I've I don't got know a parachute. what he's saying. I'm not crazy. But no, she no. she didn't hear him. I, I cinematically yeah. they made a point to make it look like she couldn't hear him, and then she thought back and said, "What could he have said?" No, this I is cannot, what I believe he said. Ooh. I cannot accept that as <laughs> truth and canonicity because my heart is physically hurting inside of my physical, real, literal. Chest and it could right be now. it is what he said too. I have to admit, I like that better though, Vinton, because to me it bothers me. That's <laughs> like okay, bitch. obviously she couldn't hear anything, but now she's just like, oh wait, I remember the things that he heard, except no, that my because... eardrums didn't actually receive the information but you she can is hear. a god you can hear what he's saying it's muted but it is there the first time through there are sounds there. having heard and it twice though shell shocked i think that she's no she is absolutely shell-shocked. but having watched the movie twice that is not what he says it's some of what he says it's it's a little bit of but yeah. there's specifically when he turns his face away and she loses some of it a little bit he's yeah. still talking and when we go back he talks stops turns away comes back talks again so it's not it's not exact. Yeah, it, it is not wow. exact, no matter how you look at it. Now, whether that's just, you know, continuity, slide of hand from the director and continuity, I don't know. But it's it's not exact. Interesting. Yeah. But I do like what we get. I can save today. You save the world. I really like nope, that. That's line. really great. It's a great yeah. line. Yeah. It's fantastic. Uh, how do we feel about I love you? I like I love you. You you buy. When do you not want to hear I love you? You buy. What? Ste- well, you buy Steve and Diana as a romantic couple, like to the degree that he would say I love you personally, not what you represent. The man's about to die. Right before he I does. Think that's one of those yeah. things. It's like they have uh, made the one step in their relationship, and then the fade to black. Yeah. Right. And now he's like, I'm sacrificing myself. I, we've had this relationship. We've we built something here, and I love you. Bye. I, <laughs> I guess mean, here's I, where I, I, I got, kind of it's for me. I love you in this context doesn't carry the enormity of of emotional weight that i want it to carry mm. i want him to say something that is more profound like i believe I in you. you or i see you 
like you yeah. are who you are. Yeah. Do the I, like yeah, I believe in you. It is actually not bad mm -hmm. at all. I, I, I want something bigger than hey Diana, but really this is about you and me. This is about so much more than that. And I I believe that he sees that this is more than or maybe you can do this because she keeps on Something saying, like I that. can do this, I can do stop this, I can do this. Yourself. Let me yeah, do this. Yeah, yeah, back stop to, doubting all yourself. Back to sure, sure. And I don't like stop doubting yourself because, yeah, I don't like stop doubting I think it's a way of it's, kind it's of working too, that idea. Yeah. No, no, no. I, 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 get I do it. I get like, it. you can do this. And yeah. I'm going to believe that's what he did say. And she just remembered it differently. <laughs> sure. I am broken. I can't. I just remember saying, I love you in Mandarin. And then in ancient Greek, it was so weird. We were talking before, and it does kind of bother me that I don't think he necessarily had to have died here. It was just like a narrative thing that was pushed yes. on it. Because parachutes, there's lots yes. of planes here. There was, there, he could have like thrown a grenade, lit something on fire but in the plane, something. Step one in writing this scene is, okay, how do we kill him? He's right. got to die, though. Yeah, yes. yeah he's got to die, though. more necessary than him saving the day is yeah. for him to die in the yeah. scene. Because he has to be removed from the narrative, and we have to use his death to motivate Diana. Yeah. That's powerful one of the biggest missteps we've already mentioned a couple of times is dr poison but i do like this scene here where she gets to look down on her and take pity and go this is the greatest evil and it's pitiful mm -hmm. it's it's something to be looked down on and to, and to be, feel sorry for more than anything yes. uh, almost and i do like that but the, the ending's just kind of weird for her it, it was like they had a bigger plan for her and cut it last minute and we uh, never get the backstory of her yeah scar. we're supposed to maybe That's feel bad for her to me but it has to have something to do with her work right yeah you, you would assume so yeah, yeah. i mean uh, I, personally, I love the idea that that is the Zeus scar. That's so <laughs> yeah, good. So yeah, perfect. but that's not what happens. <laughs> no, I not. know. It, and it feels like something's missing, and then she just disappears yeah. out to make more gas bombs, and Diana doesn't Or blows care. up in the giant crater. <laughs> yeah. It's a pretty big fucking crater. Yeah. True. But, I mean, all those other people are just, like, hugging it out, and I have to assume yeah, that she's walked over there. Yeah, but they weren't right there, like, under the tank <laughs> well, that Diana is, was going to chuck on them. This is one of the things. We get this moment of, of salvation, this moment of restoration with all the German soldiers, and even the Howling Commandos, too, and we don't get that moment for Maru and I right. really wanted that yeah. because of this problem with her being objectified and and made vulnerable rendered vulnerable in this moment so that Diana can have her moment of compassion but it isn't for the first time compassion directed toward the individual in this moment she is concerned I believe in love that is not, why it I am missed for me I think you. yeah I like, think that is why this redemption. missed for me because and first of all I never believe that she's not going to land back on the side of compassion and love like yeah. So for me, there's no like, oh no, is this, I mean, is she turning towards the dark side? There's none of that. So it's yeah, just like, you're wasting yeah. my time. Why are, why are we doing this thing? Um, so I much prefer the fact that when she busts through, when, when she sees Steve's plane explode and she busts through the metal and that is powered by her compassion, mm -hmm. That's where we land on the, the most powerful thing about Diana is her love and her empathy and her compassion. But then we try to take that where he's like, yes, yes, show me all your hatred and your <laughs> anger. I'm like, but that's not what this thing is. But maybe they're trying to make me think that's it's what yeah. it is. That mm -hmm. got muddy. I yeah, think they really I muddied agree. the waters right there. They should have not done it. I like the idea of it being instead Aries having a fundamental misunderstanding of the motivation of Diana. And just m just villain monologuing. Well, that's yeah. interesting, Sarah. Do you think that he is misunderstanding her, or do you think the movie is leaning on our? Uh, is the movie saying that Diana? Look, is if we need to just here? say whatever the hell we want about like whatever in this movie and get to headcanon whatever we darn well please, <laughs> then uh, yeah, no, I think that I mean like Aries doesn't understand love. Aries doesn't understand no. compassion. Aries doesn't understand. He doesn't understand the fundamental truth of why Diana is reacting yeah. to Steve's death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, he, he doesn't, he's not human. He wasn't raised by people. He is a God, uh, raised by Zeus, who is not like the greatest dad in the world. <laughs> um, and so, and I mean, like he's only ever seen humanity as wicked and evil and as something to be destroyed and as something to, you know, something less and something unworthy and something undeserving. And so I, I really do believe that he completely misunderstands yeah. what Diana is going through and what she is feeling, mm -hmm. because I don't think that it's, oh no, my boyfriend's dead. I'm so sad. I think that it's anger that Aries doesn't understand. I think that it's, a, it's, it's frustration that, you know, she couldn't, cause she told him, let me do this, whatever it is, I can do this. Let me do this. I can do this. She couldn't though she yeah. couldn't save him she couldn't stop this she couldn't stop this war she's not going to be able to stop world war ii she's not going to be able to stop the hundreds of wars in hundreds of countries on this planet for the next however many years up until bvs like <laughs> she she's 
not as strong as she thinks she is, but that's not going to stop her from trying. Mm -hmm. And I think that Ares fundamentally misunderstands that. So she throws the tank away. Maru disappears from the narrative and will never be seen again. And then... Damn shame. I believe in love. We, I think, on this side of the table, that Sarah and I are our <laughs> team I believe in love. You guys, I don't know, hate love? Is that where we are? Oh, no, I'm, I'm team. Yeah. I, I love that part. I like that part, too. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I'm the one sad cynic who's like, <laughs> do you have to say you it, super though? super believe in love. That's the problem, is don't say the line. That is it. It's, it's only don't say I, the line. I, I, I love the theme. I, I love that, absolutely. Um, and again, I think that it's shown when she busts out, and I think had there been i would much have preferred that there had been a moment of true compassion with maru when he had said see they are unworthy of your sympathy yeah. all we need or undeserving or undeserving <laughs> all we need is for diana to reach down and to touch her scar exactly that is all we need yeah, we don't need great. i believe in love we need the show and not the tell i like i believe in love in part i think because of what sarah was just saying that aries doesn't understand that it is important to Diana that he comprehend why he oh, is about good. to be destroyed. Yeah, but I think we get that from the really great part of that speech that says, yes, they're capable of all the things that you say, but they're also capable of that part worked for me really well. Yeah. It was yeah. just the, but I believe in love that I kind of. <laughs> Sarah, can you talk a little me. about the ways in which I believe in love pierced your heart and opened your soul and changed you forever? Am um, I overstating that first off, or is that a fair no, account of what happened in the movie <laughs> <laughs> Um I don't know. I think that it's important to feel like... I think that it's important to feel like it's okay to believe in love. I feel like it's important to believe in love, first of all. And I think that it's important to be able to say that. I think that there's so much... I mean, like, yeah, just like what Diana was saying. Like, yes, they are capable of terrible things. Humanity is capable of terrible, miserable, awful things every day. Starting wars and killing people and killing women and killing children and not even looking at them when you do it. And so I think that the strongest and greatest thing she could have said in that moment is, I believe in love. One of the things I like most about this line, I have to say, is that it absolutely differentiates Wonder Woman from the rest of the DCU. Because mm. there has never been a DCU movie in which any character would ever say, even ironically, I believe in love. Mm -hmm. So I'll take that as a beacon yeah. of hope, as, a, yeah. as the metaphorical light in the sky that we didn't get in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take yeah. that. There. There's our sky beacon. How did it work for you? <laughs> I think it worked fine for me. It didn't, yeah. it didn't bother me at all. I, uh, I don't know if I had as much emotional uh, attachment to it. Like I didn't get like, oh, yeah, I'm so glad. But I think it worked fine. I didn't see a single problem with her saying it. And I do like and what you were just saying that uh, in some ways – being like, of course, uh, I'm not a woman that gets to relate to Wonder Woman sure. and be like, oh, finally, I have my superhero. But I do get to say, oh, finally, I have my Superman because this is what I want Superman to be right. in a lot of aspects yeah. so that I didn't, that so. was stolen yes. from me by yeah. Snyder. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this is exactly the and kind so of I character. I do want him to be that type of character yeah. who can say, I believe yeah. in love. Yeah. And yeah. he's never going to say that in the Snyder verse. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it, yeah, I think that it also, I mean, like, it really is just kind of like a slap in the face to all the DC movies that we've gotten at this point where it's like, hey, you guys know that heroes could, like, be good people, though, right? <laughs> Yeah. Like, you know that, like, it's like it's okay for them to say this kind of stuff. Yeah, and that's I really like that yeah. aspect of it, especially thinking about it now. What really kind of fell flat for me a lot here was like, I just, I, maybe it's just what I walked into the movie with, but in, during this battle, I just was like, oh, God, here's, here's Snyder all over everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's so much Snyder in this I do fight think that scene. The, I do uh, think the fight scene lasts too long. Yeah, I mean. They always do, though. Yeah. They just always yeah. do. Throughout the film, we've seen. I didn't feel that way about the beach fight. Me no, neither. No, no, no. Yeah. No, the beach fight. I could no. take another 15 and, minutes And let me the tell you fight. why. It's because throughout the film, there's she's showing this great fighting prowess, and I love watching it. I could watch her fight all day long. But that's not how she's fighting Ares. There's yeah. lightning and explosions and yeah. you're picking up rubble throwing and throwing. Tanks. It's like this is yeah. the end of every blockbuster summer movie. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. This is too much. And it, it very much so feels like uh, Batman versus Superman at the end yeah. of it. Yeah. Or the it end of Suicide does. Squad. It's mm -hmm. the same thing over and it's like, this is totally Snyder all over this mm -hmm. thing. And why? Why did we let this happen again? <laughs> <laughs> I we he has so much creative control, apparently, that he just got to decide how this ended. <laughs> um, Basically, it's a bathroom break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then the one thing that really bothers me is, this is a, a typical thing that happens in the movie, where the hero learns a new skill at the very end to defeat the bad guy, so she can yeah. take in his lightning and then shoot it back. I mean, I, we already know that her bracers can shoot like a power thing out, yeah. mm -hmm. but we didn't know at all yeah. that they no. could take in this lightning 
diving this into is the back of that would this that is would destroy him finally. A Sailor Moon power up at the end. Yeah, of the yeah. Scene. it really absolutely is. Yeah. yeah, no, the moon wand turns into the moon scepter. It's a whole big deal. <laughs> uh, what I really like about that scene is how the lightning, like she's got her arms up in front of her, and the lightning is arcing between, and it almost looks like. He's try like it looks as if the lightning is like a binding thing, mm, like trying to yeah, cool. trap her and mm. diminish her and bind her up. And she and realizes the empowerment that comes from that. That's well, not even that. Like, okay, this isn't. This is. It's not really binding me. Yeah, this yeah. is. You have. You have no power over me. <laughs> as a matter of fact, I'm well, going she, to turn your power back on. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And she calls him her brother, which is nice because that's yes. again that callback to knowing like your enemy, line. to mm -hmm. knowing who it yeah. is that you're destroying. Yeah. Yeah, I like. I really like that she says brother. Yeah, I like that it's a lot. So good. I like that mm -hmm. a lot. Uh, so she does defeat Ares, and then we get the celebration that we've mentioned a couple times, um, and then uh, it moves on to further celebration, showing like the war is over. That you get the memorial, and there were no more photos. wars ever no again. Wars ever Thanks, again. Diana. <laughs> I'm saying we don't know for sure. Also, Maybe super she great coat. Solve war. Yeah, very good coat. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she solved war. Maybe she did. There Maybe are uh, on that board. I read. Uh, Portraits of real life soldiers from that time, oh, that's but nice. they weren't ones that actually died in the war. Some of them lived to their 80s, so it doesn't yeah, make sense that they yeah. were Weird. on the memorial board. There. Well, I mean, that way, you know, Grandpa can take his granddaughter to the movie and be like, "There I am." That's me. Sure. I'm in the Wonder Woman movie. <laughs> Um, so back in present day, uh, Paris, Diana responds to Bruce Wayne, and then here's the ice cream truck and leaps away. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I kind of like that. Leap flies. Fly, Leap yeah. flies. Leap flies. Leaps. Leaps away. <laughs> um, oh it, no, we're going to use that for every Wonder Woman appearance from now on. It is worth mentioning that in the final scene, she's wearing a red turtleneck and ponytail, which is an homage to Linda Carter's Wonder Woman, who often oh. wore the red turtleneck and, or who often wore a turtleneck specifically I and a ponytail. That. Yeah. That's Excellent. Fantastic. What do you think of the email that she is sending to Bruce right at the end? Thank you for bringing him back to me. I like that she doesn't, I mean, I don't know. I mean, we don't see the rest of the email, but I mean, I don't know. I like it. It's almost kind of her way. Cause like the note that he sends her is, Hey, I found the original. I hope that one day you tell me your story. Yeah. And she's just like, fuck you. It's not your story. It's mine. I don't need to tell you shit. Yeah. But thanks for the picture. People in movies never start emails with salutations. That's true. Which I quite like. There's nope, no, not papers. even a hey. <laughs> Not even thanks. Just, yeah, no. Uh, hmm. I'm just going to send Batman. this to your public address. Here's Batman. <laughs> Boy, I sure miss Superman. <laughs> Batman at Batcave.com. <laughs> Batman at Bruce Wayne Enterprises. No! <laughs> <laughs> You've done it wrong! <laughs> Bruce Wayne at Batman.com. Shit. <laughs> I love so much the, the shots of Paris. I love so much the, the sense of Paris and the, yeah, the leap itself did bother me a little bit, but we get that super iconic image to close out the movie. And which I'm, is I'm nice. happy yeah. with that. And then, of course, the music comes up again, which is just magnificent. Pretty great. Mm -hmm. Pretty yeah. great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what you expect from a Superman movie is him to fly off toward the camera and give a smile and then yeah. fly away. Yeah. And it's kind of what you get there. It's, it seems like an homage to that to me. Uh, so overall, this movie... It's fantastic. Yeah, I yeah, it. no, it's a great. It's so movie. good. Yeah. I, I, I have a few complaints. Much. I do think that it followed a lot of the MCU to traditions to great effect. The things I like about my Marvel movies, mm -hmm. but also adopted the 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 one failing that they have in my yeah. in my opinion of, of handling their villains poorly. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's fair. Can you imagine just how perfect it would have been if Maru had been Ares? It, oh like, my gosh! Yeah. Ever since you told me that, I'm not going to be able to stop thinking. Yeah, about yeah, it. yeah. It's, it's way it. better. Yeah, yeah. That's it's it. way better. Yeah. I'd headcan it, but I have to rewatch this movie because I'm gonna. That's I really true. want yeah, to, no, so yeah, I can't yeah. just headcan yeah, no, something we, that just we'll absolutely doesn't happen. <laughs> there you go. We'll do a fan cut. cut. Maru is Aries. Uh, so I mean, do we want to talk about like our favorite parts and stuff? I feel like we pretty much covered yeah, we can it. We go around the table. Elizabeth, yeah. What was your favorite part? Uh, oh, this is hard. I, I get most emotionally moved by the crossing of the front and the destruction of that bell tower. However. I like everything that happens on uh, the mascara. Yes, I like everything there. Like I want, I, yeah, I want the 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 before. Like I want yes, the yes. pretty cool movie of everything on the island. Want young Diana Prince is what you want. Yeah, basically, yeah. The young basically, Diana no, Prince adventure. Even a show like that's basically Xena, but Diana. This, yeah, I've said this all to you individually. I haven't said this on mic yet. Why is Lucy Lawless not in this Why film? Why not? I don't know. Why on earth? Why? She could have been one of the senators. How did we miss this? She should have been this. Yeah, no, absolutely. A senator. Yeah. 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 Nope. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That Baffling. Was a miss. Baffling choice, you guys. <laughs> Vinton, what was your favorite part? Uh, probably the beach. The beach was awesome. Yeah. Or, or the yeah. small village with her sliding around on the shield, just just beating yeah. everyone up. It's mm -hmm. Every time the, the Amazons get to like really just show their strength against like mm -hmm. people that aren't Amazons. Like yeah, it's, it's, sure. it's fine watching them fight each other too, sure, but just sure. seeing it like against like real combatants of like human beings, it's like, oh that that's awesome. <laughs> this is great. I love yeah, every bit great. of it. <laughs> yeah. Sarah? 
Uh, I believe in love, but also no man's land. Just real. I mean, again, when I, the first time I saw this movie, I sobbed basically the entire time. I was just like, I can't believe this is really happening and that it's as fantastic as it is. Like it's the best thing ever. Um, and then the second time I went and watched it again, like just as soon as she whips down her hair and puts on Antiope's headpiece and just, It's so affecting, and I still can't parse entirely why it is affecting to me personally, but it just, it is the greatest. It's the best thing. The <laughs> best thing. Oh, in the moment whenever she's fighting Ludendorff, and he, like, tries to stab her with a sword, and she catches the sword in her hands, wow. is the buffiest thing it I've is seen so since buffy. Buffy. Oh, that's yes. true. And yeah, I yes. love it. I adore it. It's so, so good. I forgot so, about so that. Yeah, but yeah. Buffy is exactly where I went Yes, in my head no, so, saw. yeah, just, I don't know, every, all of it. It's all my favorite. Every time Gal Gadot is on screen, like, I don't care about anybody else. Just, yeah, it's when Diana is just being good, capital G yeah. good, mm-hmm. then yes, that is my favorite I'm part. Into that. I think my favorite scene in the entire movie, I love the stuff in London. My favorite scene is probably the scene on the staircase mm-hmm. when he reveals oh. her, when he's trying to quiet her. And, and that is all awful and difficult to watch, but I think very, very true. And her mm-hmm. outrage is difficult to watch, but very, very true. And then the lasso and telling her, no, we're going to do this anyway. Yeah. That's a great moment, a great moment of connection between the two of them. I think I buy them more as a romantic couple in that moment than maybe any other point in the film, the dancing included. Wow. But it's, it really works for me. <laughs> I, think this is, I think this is a knockout movie, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sarah, you said originally that this was your favorite superhero movie. I think you've recanted that yes. slightly. Yes, yeah. When I left the theater the first time I saw it uh, and posted that sobbing video of myself on Twitter, uh, yeah, I was like, no, this, and this happens every time I go see a movie that's like really, really yes. good. It yeah. happens <laughs> like, it has happened to me a lot with like Disney princesses in particular. Um, but yeah, when I first walked out, I was like, no, this is absolutely my favorite, my number one favorite superhero movie ever. I don't think that's true, Yeah. but it's still, it's one of my favorite movies ever. Sure. And I mean, Nathan and I have already decided as soon as it's available, we're buying like the special edition metal case, extra super Blu-ray, whatever the hell. Uh-huh. Like we're going to just immediately Comes purchase that. Comes with a that. t-shirt and a lock of Gal Gadot's hair. <gasps> <Ooh. laughs> <laughs> so you can clone her. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I mean, I'm not opposed to that idea. <laughs> uh, no, but I mean, like, as far as, I mean, like, if I can, uh, like, combine the Avengers movies, like, into one slot, sure. like, on my favorite list, Wonder Woman comes in number two. And Avengers only beats it because I do love ensemble casts sure, sure, so, sure. so much. Oh, yeah. Avengers yeah. is so much yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, it's Avengers and Ultron and Civil War are all, like, slot one, mm-hmm. and then it's Wonder Woman. Elizabeth, I'm not going to ask you for a ranking or a favorite. <laughs> Thanks, babe. But how do you feel about the movie in general? Does it rate for you alongside the best Marvel movies? Uh, yeah, no, I think it does. Yeah, absolutely. No, I put it in in terms of how I appreciate movies. I put it up there with the Captain America movies. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Bitten? I don't think that it breaks my top five when it comes to comic book movies. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, I'm such a Marvel fanboy that there's yeah. been so many great things yeah. that have happened and they're about to happen. Yeah. Even yeah. It's going to just really mess up my list. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's hard to say there. I think it is within my top 10. I think that it might be my favorite DC movie. And I'm not saying DCEU because yeah. I think it might be better than all the Batman movies we've ever gotten. Yeah. Uh, and that's hard for me to say because I'm a real big Batman fan and I've mm-hmm. really enjoyed some of those Batman movies. Yeah. I do have some problems with the Nolan movies, but I think they're good movies, not necessarily yeah. good Batman movies in mm-hmm. every aspect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's hard to say, but I think it's within my top 10. I think this is categorically the best DC movie for me. I think even the Nolan Batman movies don't, don't compare, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is in part, you know, I'm an optimist and well, Cap is my yeah, guy. And yeah. I like, I believe in love and I like the message of this film and I like the palette of this film <laughs> and I like the energy of this film. And hey, you guys, we have a hero who smiles like at least oh, once. Right? Yes. 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 At least one time. Fresh smiling heroes. Lack of brooding. Yes. 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 Almost brood free. Yeah. And good character growth, which is yeah. also something we don't always get. Which mm-hmm. I really love. And the statement on not even just feminism, but, but femininity. Mm -hmm. from this film Mm -hmm. I think is genuinely important and hopefully genuinely impactful. Certainly the box office receipts suggest that this is going to be a movie that is going to spawn a lot of imitators and hopefully create a new kind of discourse surrounding superheroes. I'm super into that. I genuinely don't know if it breaks my top five. It doesn't push the Cap trilogy from the top three spots Mm -hmm. when it comes to superhero movies. I do like, I think, the first Avenger more than I like this film. But it might be better than all the other Marvel movies. It, it may be there, like four or five somewhere in there, though. Mm-hmm. Like, Vinton, I'm expecting some reshuffling of my list. Oh, I'm yeah, the Spider Man's going to throw Homecoming, everything off. Yeah. And then Ragnarok and then Black Panther. Yes. Yep. Yeah. No, <laughs> pretty good. My list is pretty good. jacked after this. Let's take a moment 
to deviate from Wonder Woman before we wrap up this epic length edition, this giant size issue of Excelsior. It's my fault. I'm the extra guest. To talk I'll a little about your response to the Ragnarok trailer when we were watching the movie today. <laughs> Have you not seen it before? No, I hadn't seen it before. Oh my before. gosh! <laughs> We recorded a whole half hour mini sewed podcast about the Thor Ragnarok trailer. Which we are, oh. I think it's fair to say, very excited. Yes. yes. So, so yes. excited. You saw this trailer and the look on your face when the trailer concluded, I wish I could describe it to the podcast listening audience, but there was a certain amount of bemusement, I yeah. think, a, a, a bafflement, Baffles. an incredulity, yes. yes, and also like a kind of uh, offended something. <laughs> out of, a, how really dare you? Did, how dare how you? How dare you do that to me, trailer? <laughs> Kate Blanchett. Uh, I think it's safe to say that Thor Ragnarok is not for me. <laughs> I am not the intended audience yeah. of Thor Ragnarok. That, that's and there fair. is nothing wrong with that. Next week, we are going back to Marvel. We're going back to comic books. We're doing Kate Leff's amazing Patsy Walker, a.k.a. Hellcat. We're doing the first trade of that. Guys, it's so good. It's I good. Like, it's another, place. like, bright, fun, jokes, smiling, good time comic. That's great, because after that, we're talking about doing the Nolan Batman trilogy. Yep, we sure are. And that's going to be a grim three weeks here. <laughs> can, we, can we time, like, can, we need to keep a tally of how often people smile. I like that. We'll definitely do that. And maybe every half hour as we're recording, we'll just take, like, a kitten break. Just, yes, just yeah. Kittens and unicorns. Or we could just watch Gal Gadot, you know, punching someone. Or, or dancing around. Yes, or sure. That dancing with gift is very good. Gifts, the eating ice cream. Good, yes. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. Uh, but yeah, so that's going to be next week. Uh, definitely pick that up. Um, I'm pretty sure that that was part of the big Marvel sale that, that was on was. Amazon. Yes, was. Uh, so hopefully you grabbed that while that sale was going on. Um, and yeah, thank you guys so much. You can uh, uh, interact with us on Twitter. We're at Excelsior Cast. You can get in touch with me personally at Elsa Grab the Salt. I'm at Paper Bullets. I'm Lizbeth Ray, 555. I'm at flesh either. And if you like the show and you want to support us and you want to, I don't know, is there a superhero movie that like you desperately need us to watch that we haven't even like had on the docket or, you know, anything like that? Get in touch with us. Um, is also, it Howard the Duck? We'll watch Howard the Duck. We will. I if will. you give us enough money, we will watch <laughs> Howard the Duck. Uh, you can give us money by going over to patreon.com slash common room radio where you can kick us a dollar a month or whatever you can afford. We've got gag reels over there. There's going to be more gag reels. At one point, we're going to dress up like Wonder Woman and do a live Q&A. And it's going to be amazing. <laughs> that may not make the final edit of this podcast. We'll see. <laughs> I mean, you said it. It's I know. So thank you guys so much, and we'll talk to you next week from Covered Room Radio. I'm Sarah Capazon. I'm Alistair Stevens. I'm Elizabeth Stevens. And I'm Vinton Bain, and we're headed to the front. We're probably going to die. This is a terrible idea! <laughs>